Are we ready to begin? Is everybody ready? Yes. We're going to go ahead and launch the meeting. Uh, I don't know the time. Uh, it is 6.31. Call the meeting to order. Okay, you can check for form. If I can. Chair Valadar? Here. Vice Chair Corrigan? Here. Commissioner Yeh? Present. Commissioner Moore? Here. Commissioner Couture? Here. And Commissioner Moore? Here. And uh, Commissioner Wang has expressed that she will be absent. Here. Commissioner Wang has expressed that she'll be absent. No. So we have a quorum of six. Yes. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> like to open it up to uh, public comments for items not on the agenda. Do we have any cards? No, one so far. And what do we want the points of the to say? Um, so if we want to stand up to the point here. Okay. And we can see them okay, yeah. Yeah, that's my one over there. Uh, any other public speaking cards, please yeah. bring it here. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have two at this time. Uh, Chair Valdez, how long would you like to give each speaker? Two. We have two. Um, three minutes. Yeah, there's three now. We have three. Three minutes each. Okay. Okay. Give me just one moment. Uh, because we don't have microphones for you, I would ask you, and we're, it's only up there, I would ask you to overspeak and speak somewhat slowly so that uh, the public, if there's anybody out there, but a lot of people watch the video. They can hear you. Sorry, but we don't have micro uh, microphones for you. Yes. So our first speaker is Ben McCann. Yeah, if I may, I'll uh, I'll hand out some info sheets to the commissioners. Um, my name is Ben McCann. I'm a parent at the Tiny Tots uh, Preschool. The city runs uh, three programs. is part of the Tiny Tots program um, through Parks and Rec. It runs two preschools uh, known as Kinder Prep and Play School. And it also runs a uh, after school care program known as Lunch and Play. <laughs> the city has put out uh, RFP to privatize these programs. And, uh, you know, that my understanding is that that's a result of these programs not breaking even financially. Um, tuition has not been raised in over 10 years. And so I think that there, there are other solutions instead of privatizing these programs. We, we adore the teachers. They're fantastic. We, um, we were at the school this year and last year, and we're uh, you know, going to attend the next two years if this program continues. We really love it. And we've toured all the private preschools that are out there. Um, none are as good as the, the program that the city offers. Um, and so, you know, the decision, unfortunately, I think um, is going to be made very quickly in terms of a recommendation to council. And so I don't think that this commission will, will have an opportunity to give feedback on that. But I'd like to ask all of you as private citizens who are, you know, very interested in, in the city and the Parks and Rec program to please take a look, um, learn more. Um, I've written my email address on the back, um, and there's also a URL at the bottom where you can learn more. I'd be happy to answer questions. Right now, we're just trying to get the word out to let people know that this is happening. Um, you know, if there is a proposal made to council to privatize the program, you know, we're going to uh, make our voices heard that we'd like this program to continue. Thank you. Well, I have a clarifying question, yeah. if you would. Um, you mentioned RFP. Uh, what is the state? Do you know what the state of the RFP is? Yeah, so the um, private providers have submitted RFPs. Um, we don't know how many have been submitted, but the uh, finalists will be chosen this week. 
Um, I can provide uh, more details. I've, I've got the whole schedule, um, but I don't have it off the top of my head. Thank you. Well, that's fine. Thank you. Any other questions? So, um, when did you find out about the change? Yeah, unfortunately, the parents were not officially notified until after the RFP was put out. Um, so, you know, we've been playing catch up here. Like, I would, you know, I really think that there should have been some consultation with the parents, with this commission, with the teachers, in terms of, you know, what we could do to the program. I think there's a long list of changes that we could do if we're concerned about the program's financials. For example, there's been zero marketing of the program. Um, we got an article in the Los Altos Town Crier um, stating that the, the program was under consideration for, for cancellation and four more families signed up for the program as a result of learning that the program might close because they just didn't know it existed. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have you reached out to the city council members? We have. Any other question? So I just for clarity's sake, so your major concern with privatizing that will close essentially will, right? Or well, so what I is think your major concern? Yeah, I think probably our biggest concern is just that we love the program the way it is now. If it if it is privatized, we're gonna lose all of the teachers. They are not licensed to work at a private preschool. Um, the, the way that the program is run right now, the teachers do not require licensing. Um, and also I think just the, the way that the teachers have been treated throughout this process, I don't think that we would be able to retain them if this program is privatized. So that would be my number one concern. Um, secondarily, I think, uh, you know, the program right now costs about $4,000 a year. That's roughly equivalent to the programs run by Cupertino, uh, Mountain View, and Sunnyvale. Uh, the private programs, the providers, uh, probably I think the, the two front runners are Children's House and uh, Children's Corner. Uh, I hope I got those right. There's a few preschools around here that start with Children's. I might have gotten them confused. But um, those programs cost about $15,000 a year. So it's about two and a half times the price. Um, and, you know, it would be a very small and reasonable raise in tuition for the program to break even. It would be far, far cheaper than outsourcing to one of these private providers. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maddie McBurney. Oh, this was the agenda item. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That I misread that. Sorry. That's sorry. correct. Yeah. Does it um, say number three on it does say number three. I just shuffled them in because I got them all at the same time. Um, and then the next one, oh, it would be on items not on the agenda from Mala. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Amal Khan. I am the founder of MALA, which was an agenda item in the mid-February um, uh, meeting that you guys had. Uh, MALA stands for Muslims Around Los Altos. There was a very long meeting uh, where you all discussed why now, you know, and there was a lot of detail. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend. I was actually in Mexico City listening to the call on Zoom. Uh, really sad that I wasn't able to attend, but I did want to extend a personal invitation from MALA to all of the co committee members here uh, to, for our first annual IFSAR that we are self-funding. We did take it really hard, our organization, that the Park uh, and Rec Department would not help finance, but it is what it is, but we would love to all offer um, an invitation to you all to attend. I'm working with men on sending that invitation to all of you. The ISR will happen here in the Grand Oak Room on March 31st in the evening. And then we will, I will have many forward to you all of the details of the, of the event. Um, one of the important questions that was raised, uh, that was uh, answered by Nadia, one of the speakers that was here, one of the committee members asked, why now? And as a Muslim myself, as a woman of color, my response to that is, why not now? This is a time where marginalized minorities are asking for help from the committee members. And I understand what the limitations were and what the committees, um, what they are and are not able to. Unfortunately, the meeting was, I mean, it was incredibly painful to watch, as you can imagine. But I do hope that by offering this invitation to you all, you are able to attend and to fully understand what an IFSAR is, which is 
in the month of Ramadan, you break the fast at sundown. So we wanted to, for you all to come and see what a cultural event it is. Um, and so we are personally, I wanted to offer that invitation and I hope you all are able to make it. Yes. Uh, I wasn't here uh, last month. What, what happened? Just quickly, just give me like a 30 second. Yeah, I don't know what was painful to listen yeah. to. Okay. So, so am I not allowed to answer that? Is that no? Yeah, we're, not, okay. we're only allowed to ask you clarifying questions okay. um, in terms of what you said, and I understand that for the commissioner's viewpoint, he, it may be a clarifying question because he wasn't sure. here. Sure. We can't re-litigate sure. the sure. in the public comments portion, so I, I apologize for that. Um, I want to make I want to make a clarifying statement. I want to ask you a clarifying question. When you said um, why not why one of the questions you got from us was why now, and you said you know you're telling us now why not. Um, did you did you understand um, how did you take that question? Did you did you believe we were saying why do you want to do it now in terms of the month of the year that it is Ramadan, or did you take it as um, this year versus say next year, which would give us a longer ramp to be able to work with you. Sure. So was it the former that you interpreted? Because I could understand if I were in your shoes, that would be painful. But if you understood it from a logistical standpoint, perhaps you can understand where we were coming from. Um, That's a very important distinction. I want to yeah, make yeah. sure you clarify that, yeah. that you understand that. Yeah. Um, I think it was actually a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, our son attends Egan Middle School. So if I could just kind of speak to that. Our son attends Egan Middle School. Um, there was an act of Islamophobia that occurred this just a couple of weeks ago. We met with the superintendent. We met with the principal. They handled it wonderfully, mm -hmm. masterfully, really. Mm -hmm. And then the question arose is what else can we do as parents to invite people to get to know us as Muslims better, us as Pakistani Americans a little bit better? So the question of why now, that's what that's what that was. And I, I again, I wasn't here at the meeting, but I was watching it to express that. So I did take that why now as both of those, because some, one of the commissioners did say uh, there have been other organizations that have been around longer, and it's taken some organizations up to five years to get something up and going. No, it was about it was about funding, not about get getting going. So no, my, please, yeah, my, no further discussion on that. Yeah. Part. So my last no, qualifying no. question is: um, Has there been um, your event is going to happen? Mm -hmm. So do you believe that any other barriers have been placed in your way at that event? Any other barriers? Absolutely not. We have been working with Gabriel we'll to make sure that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually really appreciate that question. No, we've been working with Gabriel and also with Manny, who have been phenomenal. And also, the Mayor Weinberg has just issued a Ramadan proclamation that occurred last Tuesday a week ago. So again, why now? The, the mayor has opened the door. He has made history in the city of Los Altos with his first ever Ramadan proclamation. So it's a moment for the Muslim community of Los Altos. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have a question, but if I may. I we did receive an invitation. Okay, so that, that's it actually was, a good it, question. It's um, not an actionable invitation. It was, but I it think is. it was addressed to me. But sure. it was given as well. Yes. So I wanted to make sure. I was trying to forward. I received me. several. So okay. yeah, let me just say I received okay. several invitations, one or two. One was the first one that came to me, the second one that came to me after we talked about inviting yeah. the commission. So I think there was a mix up and I sent the one that was sent to me. I didn't think it was addressed to me, but it was because I got a response okay. a few hours ago uh, today yeah. saying, oh, somebody, uh, you responded, you're going now. And I can't make it that day. I'm okay. out of town. So I'll work it out. Clarify that. So, yes. And it would actually only work like that because the the, the address was uh, okay. to your email address. Okay. Uh, I did ask okay. Manny for the individual email addresses and he said okay. no. So what I will do then is we will figure this out. We will okay. figure, I can send you also the details in an email. There's a, way, there's a way I can blindly send something to them. And if they respond to you, that's different. So yeah, maybe the commissioners who are interested in going and getting an invitation for this email, email Casey, 
and then she will send out the individual uh, emails to the group. Okay. And then the link that we can click on that. Yes. They'll send them out directly. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I messed you up there. No, no, no. That was yeah. that made me a little. Too many to show up, so yeah. this is for the best. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No further public comments. Are there any other anything on the floor? Then we'll move on. We'll enter the uh, the items for consideration portion. Uh, first, the the minutes. So the minutes that were published to, to the um, public record, to the packet, are erroneous uh, beyond what we could amend here. So you are recommending that we continue uh, their approval to the next meeting? Yes, based on the fact that we updated the minutes that originally were written down, we did not post for your review, all the commissioners review, the proper one. So I recommend, as uh, staff recommends that um, the commission make someone make a motion to uh, continue the approval of the minutes of the next meeting. So moved. I have a motion. Second. second. Motion from Commissioner Torres, a second from Commissioner Morris. I'm starting to articulate those because as we were reviewing videos, we realized we could not hear who was making motions and who was making friendly amendments and things. So I'm going to start to make that a performative part of the meeting. Um, any discussion? Yes. Are we still using subcommittee as a term? No, ad hoc committee. Because it says it on the thing. Yeah, there were co minutes right now though. So, it's in the minutes. It's, yeah. We need to adjust. Yeah, that. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that. But that can be yeah. that can be adjusted. Okay, so we're going to um, delay. Uh, the, the well, actually, can I, yeah, can I have a, a vote for that? Yes. So all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Great. Um, moving on to the museum land acknowledgement. Okay, good. Would you like to do your presentation? Sure. So since, I've, uh, since I wrote this down, uh, we will read um, the museum, the Los Alpos History Museum, reached out to us and represented today, I believe, by Elizabeth. Anyone else? Or, okay. Um, and uh, she will be here from, uh, when she introduces herself, she'll be here to uh, present, uh, do a presentation to the History Museum um, and discuss and acknowledge, uh, land acknowledgement that is part of the process of reconciliation with Native American tribes in the United States. So, and she can tell us more in her presentation. So please come come on up or come to the table. Or the, you know, what would you prefer? What, Anything you prefer. Either one, whichever one works. Can we throw this? Um, I I did provide I a couple of slides. Yeah, no. yeah. Okay, great. So thank you so much, commissioners, Madam Chair, staff. Thank you for having me here this evening. I appreciate it. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ward. I'm the executive director of the Los Altos History Museum, I'm right across the way over there. And um, I. Do I need to stand somewhere where the camera can see me too? No, no, no. Thank you. We're going to have slides anyway. There we are. So um, as a little bit of background on myself, just sort of briefly, um, my, my, um, uh, my master's degree is in anthropology. And um, I'm sure many of you are aware that the United States has a um, colonial history um, related to the many, many, many Native American peoples and tribes all over this country. Um, when I was working at the Smithsonian Institution, we were working with the Alaskan Native groups, and um, there's all sorts of very heartbreaking experiences of Native peoples. Um, and, and in Alaska, at the Arctic Study Center where I was working, we were working on repatriation, both in a physical sense of bodies that need to be reburied, um, artifacts that need to be returned, but also in terms of, of cultural knowledge that needs to be respected and it needs to go both ways. So um, for at least, I would say 30 years, if not longer, the museum field has been thinking a lot about how do you relate to the native peoples of this country. Um, it started out the museum um, 
profession started out as a colonial enterprise of actually going in and breaking into graves and taking artifacts. And if you think about Egyptian tomb raiding and all of that. So there's been a lot of work on the museum field to try to sort of overcome that and to try to do some process of healing. Um, so one, one technique that's come about um, that not just museums do, but museums were at the forefront of it, of doing a verbal land acknowledgement. And I'm sure many of you have been at events that start this way, that say we want to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral homeland of the Muatma Ohlone, for instance, here, and, um, and recognize the tribal names and the tribal affiliations and might even say something in the tribal language um, to be able to articulate that this is a homeland that was unceded territory in some cases, right, taken without any due process or without any legal um, methods. So that's, that's a verbal statement that gets made very often um, in front of programs. And um, it, it does usually, you know, as I yeah, mentioned here, it's part of a long-term, that they, indigenous people had a long-term legitimate and important right to land. So uh, it's, a, it's a matter of respect and being respectful to the ancestors that were here before us. Um, it, that they lost access to their land in a process that was not fair and equitable. That's part of what makes a land acknowledgement meaningful. Um, is that you actually acknowledge that the land was taken usually without, um, uh, and even if you were paid a couple of shells for Manhattan, that's not necessarily considered like a fully fully equitable um, process. And, um, and it usually has, a, it's really, really important that there be points about their continued presence in the land. So this is not said in the past tense. There are still alone in this area, there are still indigenous people um, in, in the San Francisco Bay area. And um, it's of course a very small population, but it is important to recognize that, um, that they are, that, that it's part of our culture today. So the Los Santos History Museum's process with this has been to engage with the tribal archeologist for the Muwak Maloney. The Moak Maloney are not the only group in the Bay Area that is um, in a position to represent the native peoples of the Bay Area. There's the Ramatash um, up in San Mateo County. There is actually another organization called um, the um, Thamian is the, I was trying to remember if they say Thamian or Thamian, but I think they say Thamian. Um, Thamian is the, is the indigenous word for Santa Clara County, basically. And um, so there is also a Thamian tribe in, in Santa Clara um, area. And the Moek Maloney, with whom we have been working, uh, they are in the process of trying to get tribal recognition. They do not have tribal recognition right now, although they just recently had um, Anna Eshu help them get some progress made in DC. So, um, but the Moet Maloney are not the only group that one could work with. It's just the group the museum has been working with. Uh, they have a tribal archeologist that we've been working with. He has served on the museum's diversity advisory group for more than three years. He's given two presentations about the Ohlone history in the area. Um, and he has provided the museum with a written land acknowledgement that's sort of two pages long. And we usually abbreviate that um, when we do our programs. So, so what we would like to do in the Civic Center is we would like to augment the verbal um, acknowledgement that we give before our programs with something that's always physically available to the public to view. Um, this would require a long process. So what I wanted to do tonight was to just sort of see, get, get a sense of the room of how interested this would be for the city of Los Altos to do. Uh, as you know, the Los Altos History Museum is on public property. Um, we have a contract with the city to run the museum on the city's behalf, but it is city property. So I wouldn't wanna do anything, especially this public, uh, we are proposing, um, I, I think you're probably familiar with the J. Gilbert Smith house. Basically the library is here. We, we are down here. This is the J. Gilbert Smith house and then you know the police department. So this is a triangular area 
that is um, right where the library parking lot and then the bus barn theater would be over here, right? So this is that sort of driveway right there. And, um, and there's the, the new walkway that they put in, uh, the nice walkway with the pergolas right there between the library and um, the museum and the civic center. So this is becoming a more major walkway until there is a bridge over San Antonio. It might not be a super major walkway, um, but it is still uh, designed to be sort of a central access for the Civic Center in my understanding of what the designers were trying to do when they built this building. So this would be quite centrally placed. Um, it is right near the Jay Gilbert Smith house, which from our point of view is interesting. Jay Gilbert Smith being a, um, a Scottish immigrant, to this area and he built orchards it's a nice story it's a really good story but i like the corrective of having the alone land acknowledgement near it as well seems like a nice way to open up that conversation and broaden it um, and we plan on planting native plants in this area so it would also be appropriate in that sense we're, we're planting native plants here regardless of whether or not we have a land acknowledgement here but it would be in the context of a space with a native oak, a native manzanita tree, and some other low water native plants that we're, we're putting in that new area. So, um, but it's a really, it's a public space. It's a public space. And I just wanted to sort of see what you would think of a plaque, for instance, or we could try to get an artist. I've asked the Alone if they have any artists that we could work with. They don't have that many artists in their, it's a very small group. It's like 40 people, right? And so I would probably be opening up the call for art much wider than that. Um, and I don't, I cannot promise the commissioners that the artists themselves would be an indigenous person. Um, so it, it's, it's just a, it's a process and a question of, of what are we really trying to get at with this? Do we want it to be educational? We want people to just understand. It could be very simple. This land used to be called Thamian. We thank our Alone, um, predecessors for the care they gave and the stewardship they continue to provide. Like it could be a very short plaque. It could be a really inspirational art piece. Um, and it, it, it really has a range of things it could be, or it could just be some native plants and some boulders and nothing written. Um, but I wanted to at least express my opinion that this is a nice opportunity to do something that would be available 24 seven to the public as they're walking past to get full knowledge of um, who the indigenous people were that lived in this area. So I'm just I'm asking for some feedback tonight on on from that range what would feel appropriate to, to you all. Where's my question when you're ready? Thank you. Second thing is what the Oh, you can go back there. Yeah. 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 She could stay here. We prefer yeah. her. Yeah. 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 While we're asking questions, so that the way the microphone can hear you. When the discussion okay. begins, then she'll oh, okay. 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 I wanted to make sure we, we introduced this as a, a concept presentation. There is no um, decision to be made, it is, but it's not formally a discussion item. Can we consider it? It is formally a discussion item. Okay. It's not an action item, right? No, it isn't. Oh. You can take action on things too, but the request is that it's discussed okay, here great. and she just. Uh, okay, so let, let, we're going to break this up into two sections. Let's, have, let's break it up. The first section will be clarifying questions on the presentation and what the director said. And then once we get all our clarifying questions answered, then we'll move into a formal discussion. Okay. Commissioner Yeah, I'm on the. Uh, uh, on the um, on the map, it was one eight scale, but I see no measurements in it. So how big? I didn't see any. Okay, so I, you want to? Yeah, so I, I just want to see it. Like and then the one measurement I saw made no sense. So that's why I want to see. Uh, the drawing was drawn by Tyler Ferrucci, um, and it is um, one eight. So yeah, so I. Or just give me an idea how big this is. This is thousand square feet, twelve thousand square feet. Oh no, no, no. It's no, it's, no, it's, it's it's not any bigger than this table area. Yeah, here. small. It, it, this is this is maybe that was yeah. like thirty-six feet by forty by like sixty inches. So that's the size of the oak tree. The oak tree that we got from um that we the city just helped us plant. The oak tree is in what's called a sixty-inch box, which 
is sort of its exterior. Um, so that's in the middle here. Yeah, this is maybe, I would say 15 feet by probably maybe 40 feet. It's 20 by 40, but it's probably closer to 15 yeah. by 30. Yeah. It's, an extant, it's an extant place that you can literally walk to. It's where the old oak tree was that the city recently tore down, right in, immediately south of the Gilbert J. Smith house. For a little bit of scale, this is a sidewalk right here. So this is basically, this is maybe what is it? Three so, feet. So yes. 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 Implemented to um, install the native plants, yeah. correct? Okay, so that's a done deal. So basically, what you're asking is if we can work on a plaque or a piece of art together. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Yes. And have you explored artists yet? I have not submitted a call for art. Okay. I did not want to do so and then say, oh, sorry, the city won't let us do it. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of preemptively asking if there's enough support to do a call for art, and then the plan would be to come back with, if, if you agree and you're interested, I could come back with three or four, we could do a subcommittee of, of people who want to work on this. Like we could then do a call for art, but I, I didn't want to preemptively assume that people would want us to do this. Okay, okay. and then other than to get Tyler to make this draft. <laughs> so, um, and then would, do you think that it would be a good or plausible idea to have the artist work in collaboration with Ohlone tribe members so that they can, could, he or she could create something that is, meaningful and impactful and accurate, you know. Thank you so much with a beautiful question. Thank yeah. you, absolutely. And I do already have, um, we have worked with the tribal leadership of the Moek Malone mm -hmm. on several occasions. The museum has a good relationship with them. They came to our opening, gave a land acknowledgement, um, and and absolutely would be part of the process, would be allowed. So I would imagine we do the call for art, we get maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 submissions. It would be the Moek Malone who then might narrow that down at, for your consideration. I would imagine a process like that. Absolutely. I just can't guarantee that the artists themselves would be um, of, of Native heritage, per se. Are you asking for financial support? Well, you know, it depends on the scope of the project and how expensive it is. And, and um, I, I don't know yet. I would imagine that might be part of the ask. Yes. Does the History Museum have a budget? The History Museum has not put this project into our budget yet. Our new fiscal year starts July 1st, so we have not put this into our budget yet. We are already doing the landscaping with museum funds and with museum um, finance. Thank you. Yes. Have you presented this to the City Council yet? No. No. I didn't know the right way to do it. I thought starting here was... I only ask that because sometimes the City Council doesn't approve what we have. So that's why I'm asking. That's okay. We still want to come up with the advisory and then they can choose to or not. That's a good point though. Yeah. 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 Don't start there because you want to start here and then move up. Um, question. Is there something preventing you from um, widening the, the net so that you can assure uh, some uh, indigenous artists that, that the local tribe would approve? Uh, it's a good question too that you know, that process usually and I think Maddie's here and she could explain uh, you know it, sometimes that would be you then need to really think about how you want to define it and um, and definitely the Moekmalone have a good relationship with for instance um, tribes that are south of San Jose or the Miwok that are in the North County I, so if you really want to say it needs to be an indigenous artist you can't say it needs to be a native Ohlone indigenous right. artist because that's where it starts to get, in my opinion, you'd be really limiting. So, but if you want to say it needs to be indigenous, then we could say California native and, and sort of work that way. Bay Area native, perhaps, right? Or, and then honestly, a lot of Hispanic culture can also be included in, in that yeah. um, terminology. You kind of just talked about where I was thinking, I'm thinking of heading is that there are so many, it seems to me that there, the, the question is, um, a lot of our ethnicities are defined by colonial lines that have been drawn in the sand. So given that, I just wanted to understand what you perceive as some of those lines that you do not want to cross over so that we understand what the scope of, of our position can take. Mm -hmm. so we don't want to be obstructive, 
but at the same time, we also, I would hope, you know, want to support this in a very authentic way. In the call for art that is currently done, I'm, I'm not sure what the, you know, what the process is or what, how you, how you're able to, to make any, maybe you try to be gender equitable in terms of male or female artists that are represented. I, I don't know what your current process is, but if there's anything like that, um, I, I definitely would prefer the art, if it's an art piece, if we're just talking about a plaque with some words on it, like an informational plaque, I, I think that could get made by just about anyone, as long as the Moak Maloney tribal leadership is working with me on the wording. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it matters who makes the plaque, right. per se, but if we're really looking at an art piece, then I would be much more um, interested in, in that sort of, you know, trying to make it authentic. To your point about um, the, the diversity, equity, inclusion aspects, we have that as an explicit part of our work plan, such that it kind of informs everything that we do. Um, and then I know that in the Arts Commission that preceded this, this commission, they had also um, discretion, discretionary um, criteria that, where they try to, to be diverse in their um, selection of art. So I think that lineage continues. I don't think you need to worry about that. Okay. Um, I have a question. May yes. I? Mm -hmm. Do you have a timeline you're thinking of for this? Um, the the momentum is is now on the in terms of the planting and we would expect to start getting um the the hardscape as well the bricks and the boulders put in in the next maybe six months um so I would at least like to get the call for art underway, you know, in in this calendar year. And um, I think it can come in later, the art piece itself. I, I think it's okay if it comes in later. But I, I do think that, you know, while while this while the tree is still small and it's easier to put the piece in, you know, I think that's that yeah, I would like to do it this calendar year if possible. Um, have, have you considered the scope of this project to be what I'm hearing you say is it's a um, something to see, something to read, maybe something to touch, you know, plants or boulders. Um, have you considered it a place to actually um, sit mm -hmm. and reside and like maybe a mini pocket park, that kind of a function? Uh, where people would not just be at the perimeter, mm -hmm. but go in, mm -hmm. or is that not part of your vision? Um, so as, as Manny knows, and thank you for that question, the oak tree that had been there had a sort of circular bench around it, and it was a very popular place for people to sit. Um, it was my understanding, it was one of the reasons why that was such a hazard was to be encouraging people to sit under an oak tree. I don't think this type of oak is as prone to dropping branches as the one we had. And the usage can change. So um, I, I think they're open to almost anything. Being that we just planted it though, I kind of don't want to stop on the ground too close to the tree. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's just for the next year. Or Certainly, in terms of something that encircles the trunk, you don't want to be, you don't want to be, you want to be within, you know, 10 feet of a something. I, I do think, I mean, Tyler's, Tyler's plan here, I'm sorry, sorry. Tyler's plan here was for flat boulders that anyone certainly could sit on, but not as directly like a bench. Um, it was more like boulders that, yes, that, that was or more organic, but it could, it's a flat boulder and it wouldn't be like this, it would be a bench height flat boulder. So one certainly could sit on it and we could do more. Right, that might be even part of the artist's idea is sort of what would the boulders look like and how might they be arranged? That could be part of what we, because that's not figured out yet. It's the plantings that are done yet, not the hardscaping per se. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, one more question. So are you interested in a plaque and a piece of art or one or the other or both together? Have you, just so I understand. You know, that's uh, that's really why I wanted your feedback. I don't know what feels right for the city of Los Altos, and I don't know how um, ambitious of an artwork, because then the budget goes up, right? So I, I think that, you know, personally, I love when word art happens together. Like, the, there's some amazing pieces in, in um, 
and even in Mountain View, you know, where just the names and the words and it is art and word together. So I think there's so many inspirational ways it could be done. Um, but the, yeah, you want it to be, um, but that gets just more and more expensive, right? So um, it, it- Do you have funding at, at any, and I know you mentioned something, do you have any funding security? Yet? I have designate, I've had received designated gifts for this sort of area as a whole. Um, and, and um, but nothing specifically designated for the Ohlone land acknowledgement art piece. Um, and I do think, however, thankfully, we were thinking we would have to sell bricks here to help pay for the planting. And now I'm really hoping that's not the case because I think if I had named bricks here of our donors, it wouldn't go very well with the yeah. with the land acknowledgement. So I'm grateful for a couple of uh, large gifts we got recently to be able to pay for the planting without selling any named bricks here. And um, so it, it would be, but we do have a couple of people we need to acknowledge for the tree and for the irrigation that went in here. So I do have a couple of people I have to thank for, for what we have so far. I do not have any funding designated for this because um, I don't know what the scope of it is yet. So you feel that that community contribution is detracting from the land acknowledgement aspect? Is that what I'm hearing you say? I guess it depends on the price of the bricks and the, the type of bricks, right? But yeah, I think if it's major donors, it's not quite right. But if it was like a lot of names that would be nice there is definitely talk amongst the board of like just a sort of wall of a lot of people's names or like those handprints from the kids there's a lot of ways for it to feel like community but i don't know that community and uh, alone land acknowledgement i think those are a little bit um you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like you know, yes. claiming ownership yeah. 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 So I think that's kind of exactly why I wanted to come to talk to you guys about I, I, I if we're going to do a land acknowledgement, it needs to be a somewhat sacred space. And so if it is, then can will there be any. Um, I mean, I, I, I have my own issues with land acknowledgements. I believe they're performative. Mm -hmm. And so putting a piece of art to me is still performative. Not that I'm against it. Right. I'm just saying, is there any way we can go further in terms of, um, you know, uh, involving the, the the local tribe or tribes on a more ongoing basis? Mm -hmm. I, I want to say perpetual basis, mm -hmm. but I know that gets into all kinds of legal mm -hmm. mess. Um, my question is, you know, there. I want them. I have this vision where I believe that they should leave their mark. Yeah. This was theirs. Yeah. We took it away. Yeah. A piece of art is not giving it back to them, but maybe them having a stamp on it that is longstanding, whether it's stewardship for it, they care for it, they have representatives that care for it, they get their names on it, they get to put their names on it, mm -hmm. they don't have to donate a cent. We pay for that, mm -hmm. you know, so, such that it is a, a real vital type of arrangement. I, I, I wanted to see if that's any part of your thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you, well, I, I think that's, um, thank you. That's inspirational. Uh, like Stanford has a native garden that is uh, different native groups have, have um, that level of tending to, to different right. garden spaces. Certainly, if we decided not to do this, there's nothing precluding your commission from deciding to do a native Ohlone walkway here around the community center. I mean, there's so many ways that a land acknowledgement could be done. And I do agree this is just a small bounded space, but it's a space right in front of the history museum. So for history, for history museums, it's awkward to not have something at the entrance to the museum. So to, to me, this this would be helping the museum mm -hmm. to be able to, to and it, I don't think it would preclude, and it shouldn't be the end of an effort. It should be sort of the beginning of an effort. And I think there's a lot more that could be done. But this was simply at what is basically a major, it's one of the two major entrances to the museum. And it would just be something at, so it would be, it would be helpful to the museum's rhetoric to at least do the performative right mm -hmm. that we acknowledge that land and then i do think there's a lot more that could be done mm -hmm. so yeah thank you for that um, who, who 
whose land is this? <laughs> well, it's Civic Center property. It's definitely okay. City of Los Angeles land. Uh, Angeles. It is City of Los Angeles land. The museum sort of footprint area, there was a 1.3 acres, I think, that J. Gilbert Smith, when he was alive, and then his wife lived another decade after he did, they had sort of tenant rights for 1.3 acres in the middle of the Civic Center. So that kind of has become the museum okay. property footprint because it so it because it just didn't get developed at the same time that the rest of the Civic Center did. But but Jay Gilbert Smith gave all of his land to the city. Okay. So it is all city property. It's just sort of the museum tends to and, and deal with. It is within the footprint of the museum property, correct? Yes, it is. That's what my understanding is. Yes, yes. But it's still def it's all it's all it's, it's all city property. So, so yeah. who's the decision maker on what happens on this land? I think you guys are. It's, it's we're the start. We're the, yeah, start. It's the start. The museum has had. I mean, the city has a has a contract with the city with the museum yeah. for the programming inside the building, and even for the rights to like rent out the space outside of the museum the for the garden, the train station, the, the train, train, the train upstairs, okay. and everything. Yeah. So we have the city has given us quite a bit of autonomy. I. I don't think I would have gotten in a lot of trouble if I just went and did this by myself, but I didn't want to. Yeah, that's why. I, that's yeah. my question: is why don't you just do it? Right. Okay. Right. 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 Because right. I mean, you you can repaint your walls of your museum, right? Um, we can't it. paint the exterior. No, the interior. Or the interior. The interior. We can. Interior. Really? But it, I mean, that's kind of going into the details, but yeah, we we work together to make sure that what's needed there is. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. okay. Can I ask you a question? So our goal right now is: are we giving like a like a stamp of approval for this? Or are we just no, discussing it? Just discussing okay. the ideas that you put forward. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys ready to discuss it? Anything helpful? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are we are we down with clarifying questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. So so as this item came to staff, um, I I believe now it's just a discussion of possible ideas. We are recording this meeting. Uh, we can write down uh, some of the things, the ideas that come. And then we can share that with the museum. And then in a later date, if the museum decides, okay, this is our plan, and they say it's going to cost us this much money, we'll try to get donors. Is there some kind of art funding that could go into the art piece of that land? So I think that's where that's where we'll come down the road, but none of that is being discussed today. It's just ideas for this. Do we like this? Uh, we being you, the commission. Um, do you like it? And then any other ideas? And I think the Elizabeth. Uh, We'll take those ideas back as well. So I think that's the extent of what was intended for this. Okay. So the process I'd like to use is that we'll just go around the table where each of you will just spill and tell us what you think, what you suggest, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and then once everybody's had a chance, we can come back and, and have more open discussion. Is that okay? All right. Um, we'll start at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm indifferent to this. I mean, this is like her, uh, her, her, she runs this, if whatever she wants to do, I'm up to it. All right. Um, Jeff, you want to include your comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's not on our work plan, which I'm very concerned about because we have a lot of other projects that we haven't even touched. And this is going to be, in and of itself, it sounds like a big project. It's also not part of our mission. We're not supposed to be here to engage in supporting performative works of art or whatever it is you want to call it. Um, I also think that the commission members were expected to exercise judgment in formulating recommendations to the city council. And no offense to the, to the museum, but that presentation didn't include any details. Um, that's, I, I still don't know what they're asking for feedback on. Um, it sounds like what they are looking for is funding, which I think would not be appropriate for us to support. I'm also a little bit concerned about the way that this is being presented to us, which is um, in the agenda report, it says that this project would recognize that indigenous people have had long-term legitimate and important rights to land and that the process by which the land, the city got the land was not fair and equitable. Is that gonna go into flack? I mean, I think our residents would not be happy about that. I'm also concerned about the phrasing of important rights on land because if, is that gonna potentially trigger some sort of legal issue where we're gonna be talking about land restitution? 
Um, I just think that this is way beyond our scope. We don't have the time for it. We should be focusing on the projects that are in our work plan and not taking on a new project like this. It, it, if the city, if the museum didn't want to include it in their own budget, I don't think that we should devote our time and resources to it. Wait, say that last part again? If, if the museum did not want to put this in their budget, I don't think that we should devote our time and resources or budget to it. Not at least this year. That's all, that's all I have to say. So um, until recently, I, I understood that I was part Iroquois. So I have a, a history with being Native American. And I grew up with um, a huge connection to the Native American people in Minnesota and a lot of Sioux and Chippewa. And so my heart is strongly towards um, doing what's right for Native communities. I'm, I feel that some of this is sort of, I hate to use the word, but uh, anyway, I feel like it's sort of lip service in some ways to the tribes. But if it's something that we can do to move um, the conversation forward, I'm all for it. Um, I think it's important to educate uh, our, our children in particular about what how our country has been founded and how our country has grown um and who has been whose back it's been on whose backs love people and um so i i'm not opposed to this i'm not sure how um i feel about the funding coming from park and rec or from the art commission i i'd have to understand that a little bit more before i could weigh in on that I, if this were to be done by the museum with or without us, I would hope that it would be an area that would have um, definitely a contemplative um, uh, tone to it where people would be able to sit. My heart broke when the tree was taken down. So I'm hoping that we can create an area that, is, that has that same depth to it. I do understand that somewhere out there, there are ashes or perhaps a body buried. So I think we have to look into that as we start digging up more of our land where these oak trees are. So um, I'd like that to be known that, that there is definitely um, some part of the Smith family underground out there in some form. Um, so I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea. I wish we would do more. Um, I do know that we did a land acknowledgement when the uh, community center opened. So I would hope that we wouldn't do just that again, that there'd be a little bit more. I'd like to see it really um, geared towards children and education. And if a, if sculpture is brought into it, um, that the sculpture absolutely be done by only by a Native um, American um, because that's the right thing to do. That money needs to, whatever money is spent, needs to go to the pockets of the people who have been uh, marginalized for all these years. That's my opinion on it. And um, I support it being discussed more and looked at. And if city council, you know, if they're the next step, I would go on record saying I support the museum doing that. Um, you're, you made the comment about ashes. Do you have a source? Um, there was an article about it in the town prior a number of years ago. So okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Um, Commissioner Couture, I concur with Commissioner Corrigan on her statement. I also uh, feel bad for the oak tree. I also feel bad for every person that's been marginalized. But I'm not sure uh, if I had a plaque, I would feel whole. Uh, I don't even know if I got a sculpture, I'd feel whole. Uh, I'd love to talk about this more, but it's not on our work plan. So I don't know how to continue forward. Okay, Commissioner Moore. Um, okay, so I too am a little curious why the History Museum didn't budget for such a project because I do think it's important. Um, and I also agree that it's important to stick to the work plan. I think lately some um, some things have been introduced to us that aren't in line with what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and I do want to try to stay on top because we have a lot to 
to get done. Um, I respectfully disagree that art is performative. I think that it is provocative and engages in conversation. I think that it can pay homage to people. Um, I also think that it's an expression that transcends words. Um, I feel very strongly about that. I come from the Art Commission, so I might have a different perspective on art than others who came from Parks and Rec. Um, I do, I love the idea, and I think that it is, um, again, important and impactful, and um, I don't know where we, I don't know how we can help at this time, but I would like to see it move forward personally. Thank you. Yeah, just a, a quick uh, question before we move on. The, the, the entirety of this uh, top-down drawing, you're just, you, you can make that decision on your own other than what you've spoken about today, is that correct? For the plants? Yeah, like for the plants. Like, like why, if you can do the plants, why don't you just do this instead? Um, in I think because to the commissioner's point there, there is definitely some sensitivity to a land acknowledgement. A land acknowledgement is a is a is a, a a more political statement than plants are. So I I I don't want to put the museum in a position of being way ahead of the city of Los Altos. Okay. If, if it's on public land. And I, I think it needs to be, it, and I'm not even asking for money per se from you guys, but it, it has to be politically supported by the city before I would feel comfortable doing it because it, it is making a statement on behalf of the city of Los Altos. Okay. Okay, I'm going to make a comment, if I may. Can I just acknowledge what um, Dr. Ward just said? Or do you want me to wait for you? No, you can <laughs> wait. I really appreciate what you just said because it is political in nature and our our public art guidelines say we are not supposed to endorse political or religious art so i, I don't know if you were aware of that but i point that out thank you chair valdez okay here are my comments um i i don't agree that it's not in our work plan and let me tell you why so that's my first point i believe it is in our work plan for the following reasons we have a mission, and it's in our work plan, to develop parks and to develop park land. And we know that in Los Altos, sometimes a park is a tiny little corner because we're landlocked and we don't have a lot of open land and we're not in the acquisitive mode right now to annex more county land and do other things that we could as a city if we could afford it or had the motivation to do to increase park space in an organic way. So we have to create it in an infill way and sometimes in an artificial way. So I see this space, it's big enough to be considered a place to go and enjoy that's nature, which to me means park. We may not be able to put parking uh, place structures on it and pathways through it, and, but it is a large enough space that we can consider it underneath that, that um, mantra, if you will. The other thing that we have in our work plan is is this underlying and overarching goal to advance DEI initiatives, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And just like we, you know, we did not reject Ramadan because we are rejecting that culture. We rejected the funding and partnership for Ramadan because we felt it was too religious and there wasn't enough time, et cetera, et cetera. There were some really hardcore reasons why we we didn't that we didn't we weren't in any way saying that we don't want to have something Ramadan related in the future. We need time to figure that out. So I see land acknowledgments and I see um, the embracing of cultures that are here now that are going to be here in the future and that have been here in the past as a very squarely within that scope. Um, it's one way to increase the connection that we have to the extant indigenous communities in the area. And it's a way for them to then re also reconnect to the land and to this community. I don't know how many of you know any Moet Ohlone people here, but they are here and we should know them. So I think this is a great way to do that. Moreover, in our work plan in several areas, we are still the bastion in this city for public the public display of art, of public art on public land. This is public land. It is under the disposition of the museum, but it is still public land. There's going to be art on there. I love what you said, Commissioner Moore, about art. 
when I said the performative part, it's only because I think of land acknowledgement. I am of that persuasion that I believe that some Native Americans should get their land back. Okay. But that doesn't mean I don't believe that art speaks much more than the physical aspect of art. It is everything. And it should be everywhere. And it can take many forms. Sometimes it can be political. Sometimes it can be religious. But just like everything else we try to do, we can try to make it approachable, reasonable, and beautiful, and meaningful. So, uh, and then stay away from those other areas. But at some point, we do have to acknowledge our history. And it doesn't mean that we are bad people. It just means that we acknowledge our history and that there were some wrongs done in the past and we're doing our best to try to um, create connection again where, where um, difference and fear and separation were the result. And then finally, with, with regard to our budget, um, in terms of the ask, at this point, the museum has not asked us for any money. So I don't think we should use that as a hurdle. But to the extent that we want to be involved in that process, say to make the art more broadly appealing, you know, to ensure that Native Americans are involved, because I know, I don't know how all of you feel, but I believe that they should be directly. Uh, and we should cast a wider net with the approval of the local tribe to try to make sure that is created uh, by uh, uh, indigenous peoples. And if that, if we want to exert that kind of make our advice executable and they have to listen, well, maybe that means we have to help with money because that's how we do it, right? We help sponsor things where we want to have a say. So if we want to have a say, then this is a way to do that. Um, whether your goals are to be as little as little political or as little offensive to current peoples here, or as mobilizing and, and informative, and I'll use your words, literally, you said mobilizing community. Uh, the only way we can have that influence is if we help them make this happen. So um, I don't see it at odds with our work plan. Um, we may not have said, item, you know, help museum make a land acknowledgement and plant plantings around a new tree on, on, on public land. We weren't that specific in our work plan um, for the most part, but I just think there are at least three areas, generating the parks, DEI, art, and we haven't hit the budget part yet that, that, that puts it in the scope of our work plan. Uh, I don't think we're being asked to do much labor wise so i think that the museum you know that's kind of in our ball on our ball court if, if we're if we're spending most of our time on some other task you know i'm sure that the museum will um you know we'll really get as much bandwidth as we're able and i don't think i don't see it as a we're not being asked to ex execute this project for the museum it'd be different if the museum was coming to say we expect the city to develop this land because it's your land and we want it to be this design and we're asking you to fund it and we'd like it to happen in a year. Um, they're not asking that. So I, I think that it's not a huge ask of our labor, um, but I think it could be very important. Uh, I think that if this is something the museum has the authority, as Commissioner Ye has said, it's their land, they can do what they want with it. Uh, the city has granted them autonomy um, personally, I think the park should want to have their hands on it a little bit so that we can help influence it to happen, but also to, um, you know, to get our thoughts manifested in that project. I think so, it's not as chair of Valdez, but um, if, and, and as Mr. Commissioner Ye has said, if, if they want to do this on their own, great, they can do it on their own. But we do have guidelines that were approved by the city council. And it specifically calls out the ineligible works of art include political or religious statements. And it sounds like from what Dr. Ward said is that this is political. And, and she was rightfully, I mean, I, I, I appreciate her candor because it seems to me that this is something that really should go to the city council, not for us. Um, I mean, we, we have to follow our own guidelines. And I know that you know, we are now two commissions that got merged, but if this came to the Public Arts Commission, we couldn't have taken it on. 
we're now merged. And so I think these guidelines apply to the entire commission now. So I think if we're gonna carry out our responsibilities as responsible advisors to the city council, we should say city council take this because based on what has been presented to us, it violates these guidelines. And in addition, I still feel like there's not enough detail. I mean, I-, I oh, we're, we're, not, not, we're not close to any decision point here. No, 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 there's not enough detail for me to, to, to give a position other than I can't support this. And the feedback that they're looking for is I think the feedback that they're hearing, at least from all of us. So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so I'm looking on the uh, the Arts Commission, so maybe you guys can help me out. What are these guidelines you're talking about? The, the can't be political, can't be religious? It's in the website. They apply to our commission because they existed. There's so isn't everything just going to look like that then? You know? Like, what? Well, I don't understand. <laughs> in the commission. It's called the City of Los Altos Guidelines for Public Art, mm -hmm. and it's a guide for what we're supposed to live by for the Art Commission. But something that's political, I mean, my understanding when something is political and an agency can't be political, they mean they can't endorse any particular I don't, I don't, party. Yeah, I, mean I don't. They can't, you know, refer to history in truthful terms and call that political. But I don't get that. There's a tree that fell down. Couldn't that be some environmentalist photo then that's saying, hey, we're the just. Oh, so please, yeah, the, please. The, um, stay here with I, I, since there's not a decision to be made, I don't think okay. we have to define what's political and what's not right now. Yeah. Um, but that could be interpreted in different ways. So I think what the presentation brought forward was it can, the decision to make a land acknowledgement can become political. Doesn't mean it's political by the definition that you're reading out of there. But I'm not going to make that statement because it doesn't need to be made. Yeah, we're not reading the words. Yeah. We haven't seen the words. So I don't think it is addressing what was presented to us. Can you help me out with something for a, from a protocol-wise uh, uh, perspective? When we want to add something to the work plan, we can just do that, correct? And then city council approves it, and we can do that, that rolling, or is only once a year? It's usually once a year that we do that. There can be updates made, but it's going to have to be something that's going to have to fall off. So we can talk about the work plan uh, as a, in, in general when we do updates to it, and we may see that on the agenda in the future. But as of now, the work plan was just approved two months ago. Yeah, yeah, that's recent. Through, so, through, the, through the deliberative process of, through the legislative process of the park, we can always make decisions to not do something. Of course, we have to get approval. No, I know. I remember when I was the chair, we just used to add stuff. And and and, and I understand that. And, but uh, but what I what I will say is there will be things that come to you that aren't specifically on the work plan. Yeah. Okay. There will be things that staff puts forward. There'll be asks. Yeah, of course. And it's like the dog and, part. And the the fact that this commission will weigh the effort that they will have to put into that decision right. is important. Okay. So something that's asked for, do you support this using your logo on something? You can say yes, and there's no effort. It doesn't have to be on the work plan. That's just an example. Okay. So, so I, I want to push back a little bit because I don't want to use the DEI or the Star Wars thing on, on our work plan as Jedi about as a catch-all for whatever someone wants a grandstand or something like that, because that'll just anything could fit in that. I agree. Okay, I agree. so I, that's why I didn't understand why it was in there in the first place, other than acting as a catch-all. Okay. Yeah. So Staying on this subject, we'll go ahead and move on, Chair, or if you may. Yes. You have a question? Chris, that. Yeah. Okay. So that area that um, we're talking about, can it be, so the museum's in charge of it. Is that right? The city, okay. It, it's, we own it. The city owns it. It belongs to the city, but are they kind of the managers of the space? Yes. Okay. That's really how it's put. So, okay. so to, to, to summarize it, the city owns the land. Any major decisions, such as doing something like this or changing artwork or something like that, okay. they are going to come and refer to the city for that area. But as of the way it properly or recently was with the tree there, it was landscaping. They can pretty much do any landscape that they want. They most of 99% of the time, they tell us what they're going to do. And we're like, okay. yeah, that's it. So Maintaining it. It's like when you rent. If they were to cement that whole thing something. over, they would need to talk okay. to us. Okay. That's just an example. So that was one thing that I wondered is that, so can that actually be transformed into park space 
of some sort so that we could actually put it on a park inventory. I'll have to look into that. Okay. okay. Could could we, we look could in that? We well, could. you have to see if it's something that's that a park of Colonia. That's just <laughs> <laughs> the whole city. What is what is everywhere we speak to that? I can't speak to that. Not right. Okay. If I could say that's that's not not what the uh, public arts commission would have done. No, and I think that's the thing is that what we have this new commission, we're combining things. And I'm hearing what you guys are saying, and I and I really appreciate that it's like, and we've got this work plan, and we need to do this work plan. And I think the difference with park is we've always gotten things from staff where it comes in, and then we go, oh, okay, we're talking about this for a while, and then we go, you know, back to the work plan and we work on it. But we're we're kind of used to getting things kind of out of the blue and not on the work plan, and so it's interesting hearing the art commission say it's not on the work plan and it's like yeah it's not on the work plan yeah, i've never heard that but then right and so we come from a different angle on this that doesn't mean we're right no, and it doesn't mean that. they're wrong right. Right. Well, well, right. sure. i don't think i did anything right so, so uh -huh. the okay. deal is that we are learning a new way of being and i really appreciate that focus of this is the work plan and i agree with uh chair valadez about this does fit the work plan in some ways. And then my whole thing is I'm always thinking about how do we acquire and create more park space. And for me, park space has a definite um, definition of how we look at park space and not just, you know, like, okay, now we're going to call it park space. So, I mean, I think what we're being asked to say is, is there any interest in this? Do we have any interest of maybe being part of it? And I would say, you know, uh, I mean, I may be summarizing that incorrectly, but I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, I think anything we can do that beautifies and adds to our park land is something that is in our jurisdiction to be talking about and thinking about. Um, and I also hear the part of just send it to city council. I, but, you know, I think it's an exciting opportunity for us to maybe participate in more on the community center with it be it a sculpture a park whatever we can do to make this a better space for our public so and then, um, the um the other thing is that this is a conceptual or concept right. uh discussion uh and the, the the question that we are asking ourselves is do we want to hear more I, my answer to that would be, I can't come to a conclusion if something is religious or political or beautiful or ugly or worth its cost or not worth its cost until I know more. I can't do it from this presentation, but it's enough for me to want to know more. And I would very strongly, my position is that we should um, ask the, uh, the presenter to give us more as they develop more. And then, you know, I would, that's my first question. That's my first position. I want to know more. The second question is, um, do I generally believe in the concept? Do I think that there's value to the city to have some kind of a role such that we make an advisory to our council that we believe there should be? And then they decide yes or no on that. Um, I believe that I believe that that is something that we should do. So that's that's how I've come to this at this point. I, much like we hire uh, the city is elected city council to make decisions for the city. Whoever hired Dr. Ward hired her for a reason. So I'm going to put my faith in her decision making ability to, to run this museum as she sees fit as the way of the curator. I mean, you, you're going to know better than me. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very smart. I'm not going to know what to do here. You know, that's why you're hired in this position in the first place. I hear so you. You do your thing, and then if there's a problem, then then we can step in. I hear you. But she has already stated an interest in having us support, in even in spirit, support what she is doing, so that she doesn't feel that she's going to run into a roadblock down the road. Well, the only reason, the only way we can be that kind of a body to her would be to know more about what what, it, what the museum is planning. Well, what she said makes total sense. I mean, I thought that was clear. They want to do something for that portion. Yeah, we have we have at least two two commissioners, possibly more, 
that want to understand what the land acknowledgement specifically would be, or they might not support it. Right. Well, there's, the there's, last thing we need, the last thing the museum need, is to have half of a commission not agreeing with something that they're doing, which might translate into a view that the city is not supporting what the museum is doing on the land that they're managing. So I understand where the where the chair where the director is coming from. They're, they they are looking for some level of inquisitiveness on our part, leading down a path to endorsement of what they're doing, and agreement with what they're doing. So Not be clear. Do we need a motion? No, no. He says no. there's no motion. Okay. Um, so. But I'm thinking, though, this discussion has been helpful for them because we are clearly not all on the same page. And so I would think that, as Commissioner Yeh said, they can just skip us <laughs> so and just and not bring the baggage of a divided commission. To Are we in agree an agreement on that? I think, we have to, I think they can skip us. Um, I am concerned. I don't have a problem doing a call for art for sculpture. But I am very concerned about eliminating certain people from being able to do the sculpture when I don't know their authentic ethnicity, and I am not the person to go through somebody's ethnicity to find out if they're truly alone. We've had too many people that say they're something and they're not. What about how many artists collaborate with? Yeah, I I love the Ohlone people or whoever to collaborate with the artist. Yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. cool. And then it, it would be yeah. open to anyone. Yeah, yeah. I just I'm not going to be the one that does the DNA test. <laughs> sure. Sir, if if if, yeah. if I might suggest something, um, could we have maybe just a, a straw poll on would this commission like to see further detail on this on what the museum's proposing? come back to this at some point yes yeah, that's my that's my question that i would like to get to, to i want to actually pose the two questions i'd like to see a straw poll on the two questions so anybody else have any other comments or questions to ask i just wanted to make one more comment it is political and so if we are limited by the political why, thing why do you say that oh my goodness <laughs> no no i'm serious i am dead serious I don't think it's universally decided that it is political. So do I think it's political? Do you think it's political? You can say it's not. A, it, so do I think it's political? Okay. I think it's the right okay. thing, but it's not. But that doesn't mean that it's not political in our world. And it is considered political and it is treated politically. Does that mean that that I think that that's the right way to look at something? No. But that is how it is looked at. Therefore, it is typically defined as a political act when you do something like that. Like and what? when you have a land acknowledgement, it's considered political. In this country, in this day and age, it is considered political. And if you're asking me if I agree with it, no, I don't agree with that. I don't think it's political. I think it's the right thing to do. But I also don't think like most people. So it, I would say it is a political thing to do this. Oh, Am I in support? Are you sure talking about the art? I'm talking about the land acknowledgement. Oh. So, so I, I have to agree with the commissioners about that, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to have it come back and see where it's going and see what the proposal is. And I've said my other comments, but oh yeah, it's, it's political. Could we separate those out, the land acknowledgement and the art? That's what I'm thinking. And you can park out on it. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is an umbrella. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put a question to the to the commission. And I just want to straw poll on this question. Are, are you as individual commissioners, and raise your hand if you are in agreement or or, or you know want this to happen, um, to Send the director off, but with an, with an awareness that we would like to see more when they are at the next step, whatever that step might be of refinement of their plan, that we would want to be shown that plan. That is my that is the question on the table right now that I'd like to ask. Are you interested in seeing their next step? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're in agreement with that question. If you would like to see more. If you would like to see more. And if you would not like to see more, 
Raise your hand. I'm going to say that, but it's more like, hey, it's your museum. Go do what you and want. I'm, I'm yeah. with you. But but I so I'm not saying no. You. Right. I'm saying it's your museum. Right. Please go do what you what you are an expert at because I don't know so anything. You don't want to know anything about it. Yeah. 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 One, two, so three. Just to clarify, this commission is saying that there, you're split right now. We're split two, three. That you don't want to have anything to do with the art that's put up there. Is that correct? No, that wasn't the question. Yeah, that's that's not is, the question. Do you want to know oh, more land. about the plan? Okay. No, no, it has nothing to do with land acknowledgement. Okay. The, whole, the whole plan. So, the whole so you don't want to see it. The, 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 the commission want to see where this is right. going. We have okay. three to okay. do. Okay. Trying to get it clear. Three to do yeah. not. Right. Three, I don't want to know. So just don't do it. No information. You don't want anything to do with it? Or you just don't want more information? You don't want it to come back. They don't want it to come back to this body. They don't so want we to would not do a call for art. We would not participate. We would not participate. The museum would, as the Commissioner Yang was saying, do with it. Unless it's something we're supposed to do, then fine. But do, 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 do your thing. You're the you're, it's your museum. Actually, I don't come come back to us for a call exactly. for art. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we don't need to see her plan for her part. We don't know what all these, like, salvia, all this. I don't know. You, you pick it. I mean, that's, that's what our commission does. We put art on public I property. Agree. I don't understand. Okay. That's yeah. Fine. I understand why we would never want to know where but public art is going. I think it's your, uh, with do, all due respect, I think it's the question. So if it were, do we want to potentially participate in a call for art? But that's different. This, that's a separate question. Okay. I just want to know if we want this to come back to us at the next phase whatever they describe that well thing. it's a three to three because so. they're not obliged to right okay. they're not obliged That's to we have enough information three three next okay the, the next question has to do with um parsing out elements which is is this commission interested in being involved with a call for art that should emanate from this plan that might emanate from this plan yeah i think it's too speculative to vote on that i can't vote on that it's too i mean People it's really going to be yeah. a call for art that's tied to um, um, what they call it, a land. They can bring us stuff anytime. Yeah, they can come anytime. Anytime they want to, they can come back. Are we still in the same? Yeah. 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 If it involves us, bring it back. But yeah. if it doesn't, I do your thing. Yeah. Exactly. So they're going to do the land acknowledgement and come back to us for a call for art if they want to come to the person that part of the request, the call for art, in addition to the landing no. There it was no specific request. Yeah. So we're asking vague. for specificity. Yes, it's too vague. But you're not open to her coming back with specificity? No. Come back when it involves uh, us, but if not, go to your side. That was the first question. Okay, so we're not necessarily split. Now I'm hearing interest. Okay, okay, so. I, but, but, director, but we don't director, need to make a vote on. We don't even need, need this to make a vote. Yeah. It's simply a poll. We're done. Yes. So it refers to: Are they going to come back for any of this aspect of their plan? We have a three-three split right now. I will give you more information on it, and I'll work with the chair to see if this does come back again, because it may come back anyway yep. if council or staff feels that it needs to come back. Done. Yes. However, I'm hearing people say if it applies to our commission, bring it back. Yeah, but she doesn't have to listen to us anyway. Yeah. She's been the museum. She's been there's a call for art, though. Yeah. If they're looking to put a sculpture in there, yeah, this is the park yeah, art, the rec, and cultural. So yeah. it, and the there's also the cultural yeah. aspect yeah. of it, which is not religious at all. So, okay. It is political. Then. Okay. Go to the next do you want to share about this? Do you want to thank Dr. Ward for coming? Uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Oh. I want to make sure that um, that you're you're set on what you're. Right. Uh, we're set. Okay. That was good. Okay. Yeah, we've got it. So one more question for you sure. is: um, Do you believe that we need to inform or kick anything up to City Council at this time? No, this time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you all. That was valuable feedback. Thank you so much. Very valuable feedback. Thank you so much. Who's our council person? Council is not in attendance today, so that's that's the one thing I was going to add to that. Council is aware of what goes on at these meetings. So ask your questions. And they'll just keep informed until a decision needs to be or a recommendation. She'll, she'll be watching it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. she'll watch it tomorrow. Uh, Sally, Sally Meadows. Council Member Meadows. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Maybe. 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 Maybe.
Yeah. Do we have the opportunity to ask clarifying questions if we can? We can't discuss. But yeah, we'll... yeah, yeah. Um, where does most of your funding come from? I'm just curious. Our funding comes from private donations and grants. All of it comes from private donations and grants. Mostly like Los Altos residents or? Um, mm -hmm. So far, all Los Altos, Los Altos Hills residents. Okay. So, another question. So is the ask is the ask also for us to like help with funding then? It's not necessarily. I think mostly we just would like to do things on city property as well. And it's hard because that is like a limitation in so many ways. And um, it's not always about funding. It's more that we would just like to be able to do things on city property sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So I want to make sure I heard this right. You have three major programs the, the, that you would like collaboration with us. Mm -hmm. the, the brochure, mm -hmm. which has its focus. It just downtown. Our focus is downtown. Yes, Your we just, scope is downtown. our scope is downtown because yes. to do private commercial property, it's Rancho is all privately owned and Loyola Corners, uh, it's mostly city or privately owned too. Okay, so, so we can't do it there. Okay, second thing is the Art on Third District. You'd like to develop that as a like a district. Yeah, so we're trying to create that street to be. And that, that would then include a collaboration of not only public art on private property, but public art on public property. Right. And you'd like to have an integrated destination. Yes. That you could publicize. Yes. And the and way finding Art on Third? Yes, Art on Third is a brand that we came up with. We created a slide presentation, which mm -hmm. we it's on the city website, I believe, um, that shows where the city could put art and also wayfinding signage. So at each end, uh, people would know to come in there. That's artistic and decorative and also overarching silhouette metal sculpture things. Anyway, there's a whole then, there's a whole slide presentation. And then the last uh, thing was you use the word subcontract. Right. Right. I mean, we we're going to do we have on our work plan to do a call for art, but we then offload that to you and then you do the call for art. And yes. Then select it. Yes. We and narrow it that. down. For, we have a curated artist list already formed and we would narrow it down. We do the call for art. Then we bring it to you, say, oh, which one do you like? And then you guys would say, oh, we like that. So you do like the front end mm -hmm. and then we would make the final approvals and all that. And then um, that would be on public land. Public land. We would help you. Um, so instead of two calls for art a year, we could do five yeah. calls for art a year. OK. Um, all right. Any other clarifying questions? I have a question just in general. Oh, sorry. Well, you clarifying you questions so we can let her sit down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question. So. Um, I, I mean, and, and I'm wondering, like, why, why do you think there's a need for, and I, I love a lot of the artwork that you guys put up, why do you think there's a need for Art Los Altos and the Art Commission? Okay, this is a really good question. Okay, I was trying not to insult you in any no, way, so I, I felt a good question to me. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. So just so you guys know, when we're doing the work that we do, everyone thinks that the city of Los Altos is doing the work mm -hmm. that we do. So I just want you to know that they're always complimenting the city of Los Altos. But part of the reason that we came about was that someone asked us to come back. So we were doing a lot of, I was on the Arts Commission for eight years, and we were doing a lot of outreach. And so creating enthusiasm about public art, because I went to a lot of public art conventions, and I just think it's more than just a sculpture. It's like interactive, audio, visual. There's just so many great artists doing great things out there. So I was like, okay, bring it back to Los Altos. And so I, I was done with my term on the art commission and then someone said, what can you do? And so we found out that we could do public art on private property with private funding, but we didn't have to go through the city council process. And so that's why we started Arts Los Altos because someone asked us to. Okay. Um, I have a couple more questions. Can I ask one real yeah, quick question? Um, are you, I know that LAVA, or Southwest Village Association, is going to start a um, initiative mm -hmm. to create 
our downtown triangle, specifically, not the rest of the city, the downtown triangle as an art destination for the state. Are you involved in that program at all? Yes, we've been asked to be on that coalition. Okay. Um, so, okay. So this would become possibly an instrument of that representation, of that initiative? I guess. I think it was an inspiration, to be honest with you. Because okay. <laughs> I think uh, we've been meeting with Scott a lot and now he's at reaching out to us to do. I that. know that you, I noticed you have galleries on here because that's yeah. So the the people who oh on the map yeah yes. So we included the galleries even if they well we started because Amy Madsen who owns that gallery wanted to sponsor us and she wanted to be on the map and so we thought we should include all the galleries. So yeah, so you have do you have gallery nine and all of them? yeah we have viewpoints we have the okay, new yeah. his and hers okay. galleries on. There. I just wanted to know if they're you know. Was it the genesis together? Or did one inspire the other? Because I know that that initiative is just really commencing now. Um, yeah, it's just beginning. And it's, I think everybody is just excited about what's going on. Oh, the walking tours, by the way, if you haven't done them, they're every first Friday at five o'clock for an hour. And that has created a lot of enthusiasm, not with just West Southwest people, but Mountain View. We have a new person on our team. She's came up to me in the walking tour and said, I want to help you guys. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, hardly anybody volunteers. So, and she's awesome. She's a great uh, person. So anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's been a really um, great thing, but our goal this year is to try to collaborate and re do more outreach with all the organizations that already exist in Los Angeles. Okay. Commissioner Ross, you yeah. had a couple more. I don't remember if it was um, Actually, because you said this, when did you, when did your term end? You remember? Like, what I'm wondering is, did you have so a hand in these guidelines? No, they okay. did that after I left. Okay. We uh, we okay. tried to do it. There is a master plan, and we did put that in front of city council, but they rejected it. Okay. And that okay. was right at the end of my term. Okay. Nancy Erickson did that master plan. Okay. So I have um, a few questions. So two more. Vetting? How do you vet your artists? What's your process? Um, all of us, our entire team, which is now about eight people, we mm -hmm. all contribute people that we feel would be a very highly experienced artists because mm -hmm. we want really good quality for the work that we put up for Los mm -hmm. Altos. And so everybody puts these names together, researches it, and we try to stick to uh, the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. We have some Sacramento artists and... Los Angeles, we've sent call for arts, but nobody um, was selected. Okay. And then we as a team select the artists by, um, we do a theme and a call for art. And so we- All eight of you. All of us. Yeah, okay. We all sit down and select together. Okay. And then how about saturation? Do you think there's a point where there's enough? You know what? I don't know. Because sometimes they're small and sometimes they're not seen. And um, I don't know, maybe. Okay. All right. I know someone asked me that too. I said, I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I have one last oh, I'm done. And I think, no, you have to. So, um, is our Los Altos plan to basically try to put as many murals on private buildings in downtown? Is that kind of so the plan? Our goal is two to three projects a year, and sometimes they're an event. So I'm actually wearing one of our scars from our, Los, have you seen the Los Altos mural, the one downtown? Oh, it just went in somewhere. Right? Yeah, so that was a community mural event where the community came and painted the mural, and mostly high school kids, so it's not necessarily a mural either. We've done two sculptures as well. But it might be an event where it's interactive, like the live painting event that will be at the State Street Market. People will come and paint. We're not sure what their paintings won't be mural, they'll be on canvases. We don't know what we'll do with those. So it might be an event rather than a mural. Right. I'm just following up on Commissioner Morris's point about saturation. Yeah. Is there any point where you're going to stop trying to put art on walls of private buildings in downtown Los Altos? Probably when we don't have anybody who wants us to do that anymore. <laughs> okay. And like I said, only about two to three projects a year is all we can do. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what is your criteria for selecting art? Like, obviously, we have a pretty bit of contentious conversation, right, about, like, not picking political or religious pieces. I mean, do you guys have, like, a set of 
rules or standards? We don't have that. We don't have a set of rules or standards, but we do know we do have a characteristics of Los Altos uh, sheet that we sent to artists. And that was actually comprised from interviews that we did when we were on the commission. So Karen and I, who started Arts Los Altos, um, we used that. And then our team came up with more um, characteristics of Los Altos. And so that's try to, that is kind of what we try to stick to is the characteristics of Los Altos. And I don't know what those are right at hand, but if you go to our website, they're on there. And the political um, part of, there is a sculpture, I just want to say this, uh, not at Lincoln Park, but the other side uh, in front yeah. of a church over there. Yeah. I think it says peace in another language. Yeah. Um, and that was a little bit, I remember when I was on the commission, there was some talk about that being religious, but then we all decided, no, nope, we're doing it. For example, the, 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 the red one? No, it's, uh, no, it's, it's actually a writing in sculpture. It's, it's in, in um, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's Arabic yeah. and it says Arabic. peace. Yeah. Says peace. Yeah. yeah. So that was a little bit. Well, why is that religious? Because it's in another language and it means peace. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's, it's there. It's there. It's I'm just telling you that we, it was a donation and we accepted it. And the city council accepted it. And that was a perfect case where there were a whole bunch of people that felt it was political. Yeah. Everybody didn't want it there. And all it says is so you know anyway okay so anyway i know you want to go home and so do i but thank you very thank much you very thank you thank you we're here to serve <laughs> all right um so now we move to discussion <clears throat> um we can do this a couple of ways we can just in general invite your comments you know as we did before or we can consider each of the three major um topics individually and your your comments on that uh you know the namely the brochure putting the city seal on it uh the second thing the art supporting the art on third district and then thirdly the idea of i'll, I'll use the word that was presented subcontracting that's consider that a not a literal term at this point, but it probably could be if there's some agreement that needs to be written. Subcontracting Arts Los Altos to means the number of calls for art that we can do as a commission. Um, so I say we talk about each one individually just so that we get more crystallized opinions from, from you um, um, in the notes. Is there any objection to doing that? Well, I just want to clarify, from what I heard, Sorry, what was your name again? Maddie. But when I heard Maddie saying subcontracting, it was more like they, they're going to do it in any ways if we ask them. Like, I subcontract my, my kids to take out the garbage, I guess, that way, because I'm just telling them, hey, can you do this? And they say yes. That's what it sounds like you would be doing. So it's not really some kind of contractual yes, relationship. They want to put it on put it public on property. property. It is subcontracting. Oh, okay, but we're asking them to do what we should be doing. Exactly. Right. Right. So it's a matter of increasing our capacity, capacity virtually by having a subcontractor. Why don't we just do it if that's what exactly. you're supposed yeah. to do? Okay. Oh, my God. All right. We can go, go through it's that. Capacity. I'm just confused. All right. Go ahead. I, I would disagree a bit. Okay. I would disagree it's about capacity. Okay. Well, let, let's get to it when we get. Can, is anybody having an objection to addressing each of the asks individually? Okay. So we'll do that. So, first on the idea of the brochure. And putting the city seal here on the front, which demonstrates that we are you know, sponsoring it, that this is a collaborative um, initiative in terms of publicizing the public art on both public and private property in the downtown triangle. So I'm a no. Well, what are the guidelines on this? I'm putting the seal, yeah, putting seals on stuff. City's open. This would be a recommendation from the commission that's saying we, we, we're we good with the city seal being oh, gotcha. placed on there. So, and that's what staff is looking for this advisory okay. commission. Okay. All right, um, so you said that. Yeah. Okay. You want to give a reason? That's no reason. No. Okay, so no rationale. The, no, the, the rationale is that we lose control. We're supposed to be the controlling, we're supposed to be taking care. We give the seal to somebody else, everything's lost. Um, okay, so 
So you think that contract. right now the level of control by putting the seal on, we lose control because then they'll change the brochure, something else will be on there, the seal will still be there. Is that how it works? No, you can always just say take it off. I mean, if they revise the brochure, the content of the brochure, then we have to re adjudicate our okay. endorsement. Where does that say that somewhere? <laughs> I think historically, when the city puts its seal on something, it has yeah, to be. Right. That's the whole point of putting the seal on, on it. Okay. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Moore, do you want to make your comments? Um, I um, am hesitant to put our seal on this because there's some art that already exists that is a little controversial. And because we've had no say in the um, guidelines and the criteria for the art that's been selected by Arts Los Altos, um, I just worry that it might, um, you know, draw some controversy, especially since we're so considerate about the pieces that we choose. Um, considerate meaning we follow like strict guidelines. There's one mural, it's number seven. I, I think there's some controversy with that one, right? There was a, the, uh, the historical photos one? I believe so. I think there was... I think there was some controversy related to that one, if I'm remembering correctly. Regardless, I just think that. Um, Is that the one off the Carol's wall? That yeah. was also. What's wrong with that? I thought there was like some controversy, like some like there was like some racial undertone. Boy on it or something. Well, there there was some racial. Well, there were certain people that were upset with certain people being painted on it. Aren't there always going to be someone upset about anything? What's the problem here? I think art is provocative by its very nature. Yeah. True. Okay. Um, I just want to say that's. I'm just going to say that if you want my. Oh, I, I hear your opinion. Yeah. I I think your opinion is 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 a is a valid thing. Um, I, I would like to participate in art walk or sorry the art the third street event. I don't know if that is on. Is that not what we're talking about? No, we're, we're now only talking right. about the brochure. Okay. okay. Just um, the Commissioner Morris, your opinion on the brochure. I'm just figuring out that some of what's on this brochure is ours and some uh, ours maybe. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like all, all, all the art. Yeah, because it's all of art and not all of it. Okay, okay. So I'm I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on some of this. So I think it's confusing. I think if we're gonna do something like this, like a map that has public and private, that it it's must public be art. Just so you know, it's all public. Okay. That's been funded by private funds and funded by private and by public funds. Those two things that differentiate it. I think that um, this a map such as that should be driven by our commission and we our. We have a map. We have a brochure, so, and, and that's and fine. The whole town, and that's fine. And I think that that's how the um, logo should be used. Is something that's driven by our commission, not driven by a privately funded organization. And that's how I feel about government stuff. That when you have a government seal on it, it should be government driven. So, for example, when the largest event in our city which is um, Fine Art and Park. It is driven by a private entity, which is the Rotary Club of Los Angeles. Right. But it has a city seal on it. The city supports sure. it. Sure. Uh, is this a question yeah. for her? Are you? No, I'm, I'm to trying to. Yeah, I'm going to hit another question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I want to yes. know, is, is that the kind of thing that you're talking about? That I don't know enough about, about that to know whether or not it's appropriate for that particular thing. I'm only talking about a map that would have a city seal on it that we would be approving as a commission. And I know we're kind of new as a commission, but my opinion is that if if the city seal is going to be on something mm -hmm. like that, it needs to be a map that's driven by our commission. So I feel like this is great that they're including us in the in their map, and um, but I I do think that it is confusing. And and Arts Los Altos does such a great job; they have so many pieces of art all over the place. Um, they don't need us, and, um, and you know, I, I mean, I feel like it's nice that they've included us in this mock-up, us being the city, you know, 
public art. But I do feel what I said is that it it ought to be driven by us to have the seal on it. So when you say driven, you mean it should be our map. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so it'd be our tour, and and if we include them, we include them. But it needs to be. I think it has to be clearly defined within the map that this is the public art that's paid for by public funds and on public land. And then this is the art that is put in privately with private funds. I think that needs to be um, delineated within that. Okay. So either we work collaboratively that way, um, that seems like the right thing to do, or um, I, I just don't support the confusion. I agree with uh, Commissioner Morris and uh, the other commissioners. Um, we already have a brochure that we've been trying to update, but we can't get it on this commission's agenda. I don't know why, but we haven't been able to do that. We've been talking about it since your agenda items. Like it's been, it's been, it was, it, we started in October. It, we asked for it last February and it's still not on the agenda. So we already have a brochure that predates this brochure. So I'm not exactly sure why we're having trouble getting to that on the agenda. But so that's number one, why I don't think that we should uh, put the public city seal on this other brochure, which by the way is, is a is a nice brochure, but there there are rules that apply to us that don't apply to them. And so if you put the city seal on this public art map for Arts Los Altos, we're going to be potentially endorsing um, art that we don't have any say in choosing. And it could potentially violate the guidelines that were approved by the city council. Yes. And, and the other, I mean, and they do try to you know try to address that, but it's not very clear. To me. Um, and then there is confusion, as, as Arts Los Altos said, there is confusion about what art is city sponsored and what art is they sponsor. And I can tell you, those of us who are on the Art Commission heard a lot of negative things about some of the art uh, that, that was put out by them because people thought it was us. And in fact, we got in a um, public comment from somebody who, who kind of articulated that they're not a fan of the Arts Los Altos art. Um, and I've also heard other very negative comments, which I'm not going to repeat here. I can if you want me to, but I'm not going to repeat them. But I think it's important to try as best as possible to maintain the distinction. Plus, I don't think we should see our role and our responsibility for installing public art in public places. Um, that's our job. So we shouldn't be sharing that or delegating it. You're talking about the third thing now. I, I know. Okay, sorry. I'm. Okay, but I, I but didn't actually know because I think it still applies to this. If we put the city seal on it, just we're delegating our authority. So, so I'll stop there. Okay. Did I already ask you? No. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, so um, when I heard um, Maddie, when I heard you speaking, you, you mentioned something where the citizens already assumed that the city was doing what you guys were doing, which to me sounds like you're not being acknowledged for all your hard work. By putting the seal on this, aren't you even making that even more so? So why would you even want that? So, the point of order? Yeah. Is yeah. this the thing where we're not supposed to? Where we oh, I can't ask you. I don't know why she would want to do that <laughs> because it now assumes that we're doing everything even though we're not doing any of this. So I think for, for just preserving their all the hard work they're doing, I don't need any credit. I just want it to get done. Okay, so I'm okay just leaving it how it is. I don't, I mean, I'm just different, okay, but again, from my, I, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, I used to be one. When you do stuff like that, people will just impute liability to the city for no reason because people are yeah, so morally bankrupt. Okay, so why don't we just limit that if possible? Good point. I ask everybody to think of that. Okay, um, my opinion is that um, because I come from the place where I want more art rather than less art, um, and that there's a lot of art that is out there now that we don't even have in our city um, that we can explore on the leading edge of art, um, I tend to try to believe in initiatives that can be perhaps more adventurous than a city can be. Um, at the same time, though, because I'm part of the city, I want the city to have its fingers in as many pots as possible. And if we completely separate ourselves from the work that is going on 
in this group, and this group can be metaphorical for other kinds of groups in the city, other kinds of nonprofits, other kinds of organizations, um, then we, we're actually losing control um, and losing the value of our advice or our procedures, our policies. Um, you know, if, if you don't like what Arts Los Altos is making, well, what better way to maybe channel what they're doing than, than to get more involved with them? Um, Are we on topic one still? I'm sorry? Are we on topic one still? We're on topic one, which okay. is the, the brochure. Yeah, okay. So with that, um, and also if we were imposing this on Arts Los Altos, then I would say, yeah, we're trying to take steal their spotlight and take credit away from things that they've done. But they're the ones coming to us. So I think they're seeing value in putting the seal on it. They, that hasn't translated into money, but it has translated into collaboration potentially. Um, I I understand what's being said about driving, you know, this sim symbolizing who's driving the, the, the car. But again, if it has the seal on it, then people will know kind of whether it's true or not who's driving the car. But if it doesn't have the seal, to me that creates confusion. But so I, I kind of look at it through a different lens. I'm I'm not um, I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I'm not saying that the history isn't there. I'm just saying that I want the city seal on as many things as possible so that the city can not only get credit for being broad and, and involved, but also that we can have influence on what happens in the city more than if we don't get involved. But in having the case. seal on or off doesn't limit your ability. To have, having the seal on or off anything doesn't limit your ability to have influence. I'm talking about the city having influence. Yeah, it does limit you. Why? Because we have no jurisdictional authority over what happens on private land. Well, we don't have that anyways. But no, we, could, we could have some influence. For example, if we subcontract some things, or, or, or just because we're collaborating. If, if usually when you're collaborating, and, and you know, if I had, if we could change the process, and I could ask a question, one of the questions that I didn't think of asking that I would ask would be, if we park, if we put our city seal on there, you know, how would, how does the park, the this commission, how does this commission? influence your call for art process mm -hmm. so i didn't ask that are you saying that if we put our city seal on them on the their brochure then we get to tell them what art they can do and can't do i don't think no i didn't that. say that what i said was we need to ask the question what they're ready to accept for having the city seal on there because it could include exactly what you said something less we, we, yeah, we, have, have we asked that question? I think we would require, our guidelines would require us to be able to control it and follow our guidelines, which they, they don't have any guidelines, so they're free to do what they well, want. They have, they they have, guidelines, have, they have but, some criteria that they follow. It's just they don't have the same guidelines that the city follows. Um, so, uh, and then they, they follow a process that require, that uses eight people. We follow a process that uses whoever's on the commission. Um, there are some differences for sure, but we, we haven't, we didn't ask those kinds of questions. Um, but as far as this, you know, I, at the end of the day, um, it's going to be who we have jurisdiction over this decision or is this your jurisdiction? So that, the city is looking on. for the commission to make a recommendation on that. And, uh, well, I think we based, based on what you're hearing yeah. here, you don't have that yeah. recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. You have off. a grand minority yeah. of one that would yeah. favor that. Um, and then, so I'm going to close that part and I'm going to move on to the um, th Art on Third District uh, idea, which is something that is already kind of existing and, and branded. It's just a matter of whether we would want to support that and endorse what's, it. What's what's unique about third that they just can't do on every other street that I've seen downtown? They want to create it as a destination, a branded destination. Yes, there's art everywhere, but they want to create this. They've created this brand called Art on Third, which allows them to to not only put art on the street that's public on private and public on public, but also to create programs and events that would draw people. I mean, that's what I've heard. In the in the presentation or the the 
the commentary. And what's keeping them from doing that right now? Nothing. Well, because they can't include public, you know, there's a there's a public aspect to it. You know, we have some, yeah. some colors, so maybe for Commissioner Yeh, and that is so they basically want to put a bunch of art on Third Street and call it art on Third. They can't put art on public places. Um, they can only work with private property owners, which they've done. But the arts, the Public Arts Commission did um, uh, contribute to that by putting a very big sculpture on that same street. So we there's a huge, beautiful sculpture that's there now. I, and I think the issues. Which is what? It's number nine. Yeah. It's the vortex. I've never seen that before. Where, where is that? It's it's from the bank. It's it's across from you get out much? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the road across from Chase. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, commissioners to go see the of our Chase. Patty Porter to Chase? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit farther down. Yeah. Which direction? Um, if you're going uh, that way, it's the left. Left. That could be any infinite direction. Is it direction. towards Foothill? It's on the map. No. Right. You're going to Foothill. Yeah, it's going towards Foothill. On Third Street, make a left. Okay. You remember? Oh, you know, I see. Okay. Yeah. I, I see. So okay. it's not it's not gigantic, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's noticeable. Than us. And so, but the issue that the that we as a commission have is that we have been asked by residents in Los Alamos. Los, South Los Altos, Baja Los Altos, um, to, to contribute more art down there because we do have a concentration of public art sculptures on public land in downtown. Because it's the downtown. Yeah, exactly. And so so what we're trying to do is we're trying to push more sculpture there before we come back to downtown, if possible. Is it just to placate the people who are complaining about the South? Los Altos? No, it's probably it's oversaturated. I mean, because my... downtown Los Altos has a lot yeah, more than 50% of all the art. So we've been trying to expand, to give more expand. young yeah. people, yeah. et cetera, yeah. art in different yeah. areas. Because there's a lot of residents of South Los Altos that don't go like, to Grant Park didn't yeah. have any art yeah. as of three years ago. Okay, I have one question. And didn't City Council ask that more art be put in South Los Altos? Yeah. Didn't they call it an art yes. desert? Yes. 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 Okay, so correct quote. Yeah. Okay. That's good yeah, that's so just so you know that sort so of going back to the third street. Are we all talking about that? Yes. Yeah. Talking about the art on third district. Yeah. What? So yeah. just great, yeah. yeah. Do it. Okay. More art, yay. Who's your where What's the question? Art on third. Do you are you do you like the idea? Do you want the city to be involved in that? I think our schools out to should do what they want to do. I think we have our priorities, which is which are different. I mean, if we can accommodate them and, and put public art there, great. But I think our my priority right now is South Los Altos. So I would say for now, I guess I guess if you're asking for yes or no, I guess I'd say no. Okay. I want to understand this a little bit more. So I think when you create an art district or an art area that what you're doing is you're creating a way that you can promote an area as well. So it's a, a way of saying, I think what Maddie was saying too, is that the, that Lava is trying to make an, a state, I don't want to, I don't know if I'll get it right. The whole downtown, the whole they're, downtown. No, they're trying to do a state destination. So Lava is trying to make um, Art a destination for the street in Los Altos and mm -hmm. for the state. So there's yes, no no. Okay. Lava is initiating a program where they want the downtown triangle. Yeah. To be a state to destination. State, to be a, an art destination. Yeah. Throughout the Bay Area up to and including the state. Right. So it's a way to promote an area, which I think there's no right. harm for us to have more people coming in and spending their dollar right. if they are all the businesses. So, I'm not very smart about this. So please, uh, is there another city that you can tell me what Lava is trying to be like? Is that like Laguna Beach? Is that what, what they're talking about? You know, where it's like all our downtown? Like, and you know what Lava is, right? Los Altos Village Association? I mean, I, I see the ad. Okay, okay. okay well, so, there are lots of cities that have art districts. Yeah. Okay, give me a comparable. Hillcrest San, San Diego has an art district. Oh, Hillcrest. Carmel, you know, Carmel has an art district. Gotcha. Okay, so that's all I need. Designate a street or something. Okay. That's all I need. Mean. Mean. I see a no So the point is that I think it does bring people into a city and you can make a destination. And I think that would be one of the focuses on art on third. I think if we can work it into 
the what we do, you know, as far as making more art happen in that area in a way that helps enhance what Art Los Altos is already doing down there. Sure, I think we should look at it. We could look um, at working with lava. We could look at working with lava uh, and coming up with something that would be complementary to yeah. what they're trying to do because it helps our businesses. So I think that's important. And on the same breath, being someone in South Los Altos, and I'll say that I have a you know a little connection there. <laughs> I'd like to see if we're going to yeah. be doing that for businesses downtown. Yeah. Los, the Loyola Corners area deserves it, deserves that love as well. And so we have these other business That's districts that need area. Loyola Corners has public space also. We now own that triangle piece and that can have art on it. So there are areas where we can put artwork in Loyola Corners. I keep, I keep hearing like the South and North. Why don't you just do both? Well, and, and that's what I'm saying. If we're going to do one, if we're doing, it's like being a parent. If you're going to do one for one kid, you're going to do it for the other kid too. So I think we have to look at how are we balancing all of it. So that's that's my opinion about that. Um, I think it's important about, I think it's important about collaboration though in that guide. I actually read the um, the art guidelines for public art. There's a um, a thing that says we can only collaborate one time every 36 months. It's on page 16. So I think we may have a little bit of a tricky. I don't know if anybody's read this other that's than the art coming. That's for public art. Okay, but okay. I've asked a procedural question of staff, which is how many of the guidelines that, that were written by either park or public arts have now been grandfathered into our disposition, or do we need to reaffirm, reaffirm them, re-review them? That is a that is a technical question that I think we need to ask council. Yeah, I think, I think staff, can staff can look staff can look further into that at, at, yeah. at this point. Yeah, was asked earlier. Especially not just as it's so written, it's as it's interpreted. Clear. So this stuff can move forward, but I think we can have to talk about these things, and I think it's good if we take a look. Yeah, we need to agendize these conversations because all I'm doing is looking at the documentation that we have. And then I'm saying like, hey, we have these things that are saying, you can do this, you can't do that, you can do I that. I understand, but what I'm saying is there's a jurisdictional problem right now because it is not clear that any pre-existing policies from either commission is automatically grandfathered into this commission. But it's also not the opposite right. of it's it's not grandfathered. Not necessarily, but just, I, I mean, if you just, Address, we refer each yeah, you, you bring both policies. I think that's without question. It's just a matter of addressing what your interest is here right. without exactly. looking for things that exactly. will prevent you from saying well, yes or no. I'm, not, I'm just trying to make sure that I know, it, but if you have that the answer, rules that are there, that that we'll make sure of that. If it moves forward, if this dies right here, we won't have to look okay. into it. Okay, I'm just like looking at so the, let me let me yeah. kind of get everybody's opinion so Commission art on third, third. Art and third. Uh, the thing that i like is we do events park does events we do events if we did an event on third i mean the old path and the old art if we did it uh, like i don't know um Remember the painting in the orchard? What if we did something like that? Yeah. So more programmatic things. Programmatic. Yeah, programmatic yes, things. Agreed. So, like Janet said, we did install that piece of art intentionally to participate in the Third Street exposure. Yes. Okay. Um, also, I find it really frustrating that we're investing all this time debating on things that we don't even know if they're going to be viable. Like, City Council needs to give us, like, confirmation on what our rules are. I mean, quite frankly, like... We're here. Sorry, I just I'm very frustrated because I don't feel like these commissions really are meant to be merged together. I just don't think we're aligned, but well, that's well, fine. That's a whole well, separate well, issue. Well, and I yeah, but it, this is case in point for me. So yeah. sorry. No, no, no. I mean, you are not aligned. So I think we're we'll basically ZD being both. Are we? Sorry, zero based budgeting. Never mind. I didn't hear what you said. Um, are we ready to move on? I haven't given my opinion. Okay. So I, I, I'm in favor of collaborating on Art and Third. I, I would like, I'm very much, to me, the programmatic aspects is something where uh, there's a strong uh, opportunity for um, either things that we do uh, by ourselves, but, you know, with the understanding that they, they know that we're doing it, or actual direct co collaboration, community events, 
Um, to the extent that we want to put more public art on public land on Third Street, that's something that we can decide separately. Uh, but I'm I'm very much in favor of of branding Third Street as a subset art district within this larger triangle plan that that our community organizations are already putting in motion. Okay, so now the third one is the last one, which is subcontracting. The idea of subcontracting um, calls for art to Arts Los Altos. Um, I'll, I'll go back to this. I'm not young. Absolutely young. not. Young. Subcontracting art. So having Arts Los Altos essentially like select the art for us. Um, isn't that our job? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like my same view of like a consultant. Like, I don't see the point of that other than hiring them to make a decision that you're going to do anyway so you can see CYA. I just, it doesn't take us long to do this stuff. The stuff out there looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And we took, what, an hour to do that? Yeah, yeah. they do look good, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I went over to get a drink of water. It looked great. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, because doesn't city council have to approve our final selection anyway? So it's, it's like, I don't understand. The best. Okay. Yeah, no. To me, it's, uh, uh, I come from tech and I could not have done my job without capacity expansion. So I have no, um, I'm agnostic on the idea of um, um, expanding that capacity through some means. And, and as long as we maintain complete control over the, uh, the outcome, the decision of what art gets installed on public land. But we wouldn't have complete control because they'd be selecting for us. They'd be narrowing it down for us. Just, just, I, I'm Sorry. not trying to influence anybody. So, let me just not gonna influence so I, I am not against the idea of subcontracting because I would some co contract other experts in art, whether they're professional or amateur, if I wanted to hear different ideas. We wouldn't have to go forward with a single recommendation that they brought forward to us. Ultimately, we are in control. And we could even say, you have to bring seven ideas to us, not two, not one, not three. You know, there are things, there's, when you decide your contract, you can, just, you, can, you can name your terms and they might walk away from those terms. They might not want those terms. So I, I personally am, I see subcontracting as nothing more than capacity expansion. We heard Sally Meadows complain that we had too many calls for art on our work plan. I didn't agree with her, but it's her right to say that. But this way, we can almost assure that we can get more calls for art than if we were just doing it by ourselves. And managing the manager. Yeah. We are city council subcontractors. We're the advisory committee on art. We are. So, so it would be like the subcontractor hiring a subcontractor? Absolutely. It happens all the time. But anyways, that's just... Hey, Mandy, you do you want to... I'm in the minority, but that's my opinion. Hey, Mandy, what does staff want to interject? I just, I, I just want to make one statement. And, and, and I, I could be wrong in the way I interpreted what the presentation was, but I think the subcontracting aspect is what you're getting from staff. So taking, so if you just put it in that context, I'm, I'm like I said, not trying to influence anybody's decision, but Jamie and I were trying to work out, mind you, we're not art specialists, trying to work out the cafe system, and you did not see all the art that came in. We had to cut a line based on the early voting in the cafe system. We're not professionals, but we did our best as just taking numbers and saying, this is the cutoff. We can't take 86 uh, versions of art to put on the wall to the commission. So we cut it off at, I believe it was 35 or something. We, we in our best, organized it the best we thought we could present it to you, and we brought it to you for your approval. My interpretation from a staff aspect is that's kind of what they would do in place of staff as a subcontractor. So that's that's all I'm saying. That's a really good analogy. Because that's what I felt, and, and Jamie and I were yeah. were struggling to make the best decision for you as possible. Nope. And we're not art yeah. specialists, so I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. And so the only comment I would make to that is that I I think that's a great example that you just showed of a form of subcontracting. However. All commissions in the city have been given a somewhat soft but meaningful directive to not demand so much from staff. The entire reorganizations are all about that. Let's call us, you know, let's call it how it is. Well, so 
you know, for us to, I mean, I, that's just continues with my opinion. Again, capacity expansion, I love it. So, and, and I understand that I'm the minority, so I'm not, I'm not disavowing that in any way. And I, I'm very confused. There were 86 and we only got 36. It was yes. 86 or 68. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me because I thought we are the ones that were supposed to be picking the art, not staff. Yeah, well, that process, I think we explained that we didn't bring all of them to you, and that's what the cafe system was used yeah, for. Exactly. You scored it. You also you saw all of them. You scored them. Oh, okay. We, we I missed all of yeah. What we brought to you. Okay. Was the final. I, no, I but okay. We I made the decision of where the cutoff was going to be. Yeah. That's why you didn't judge for final yeah. everything. You okay. saw all of it. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't judge it all. Okay. okay. Uh, here at the that's table. when we rated it like one to twenty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. About capacity. So the. Public Arts Commission got a lot done because we are a very effective um, collegial uh, commission and we worked. I mean, we got stuff done, so we had the capacity. And I think, you know, with us here, we have the capacity. I don't think that we should be exploring entering into the equivalent of a joint venture with a 501c3 saying that we can't do the work because part of the problem that we can't do the work is because we can't get on the agenda. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, we can talk about more more about that in future agenda items, but yeah, if the way the minutes don't have the future agenda items, the agenda, you could probably start with your boss. Thank you. So, yeah. you, I asked if the, the future agenda items were here, but I don't see them. So, oh, um, Redwood yeah. Grove, Pathway, yeah. yeah. Art Tours, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. She can just put on for the art commissioners that are now park commissioners, if I may. The question is, is there, well, it's for the commissioners that have experience in the art background, and I would I would assume that they will ask us, you know, that have more experience occasionally in park stuff. But here's my question: is and it's for staff and it's for everybody. What is stopping anyone? in the community from sharing any artists that they think are important for us to look at and consider putting in the city. Is there any rule anywhere, whether it's valid or invalid, now that we're a combined committee no. or commission, no. that stops people from walking in here with pictures of art and saying, we think you should look at this. We think you should look at this. You know, we think that's stopping them is the fact that we do not promote that activity. Okay, but I just want to know if, if there's anything well, that can stop people. Because this is on the site. Um, no, but that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Anybody can walk in. So Art School Saltos can bring us seven, eight, ten artists that they think that we need to look at, and we can look at them and decide whether or not we have a place for them and we want to acquire that art. From there, we then have to have City Council buy into it as well and say, yeah, we want you to do this. Well, we don't have a wall space, number one. But, but I'm just saying that... Please, anybody can bring forward any artists they think that we need to put on public land. If people can bring up anything, if they want to sell us lockers to put in the park, we have done that before. Yeah, we had that brought forward. Yep. Okay. So please, please, the public that's listening, the public that's yeah, I don't think that bring us art. Bring us art. I mean, that's to me, that's a right, great so, thing. Um, I have not heard any support on the third item, so I've only heard support on the second item. Well, no, I'm saying on the third item, if, if granted what Manny said, if it's something that would just replace what they would have to do, but we'd still see it all, I don't, whatever comes in front of my face, as long as it's what's it's supposed to, then I don't care who's doing it. So if Arsul Saltos wants to do it, or Manny wants to do it, or Casey wants to do it, I really don't care. Whoever's life is made easier, if they like it more, then have them do it. If he likes it less, then don't have to do it. Yeah, it's still going to have to go through it. Yeah, I know, but you can. Right? You're yeah. still going to have to look at it. You're still going to have to do the work. You're not going to have to tally everything and then. Well, I'm still not going to add hoc. It's not good. Then we need an ad hoc yeah. subcommittee, whatever we're called. We still have one more agenda item, too. Oh, that was like three for, are not the same thing. Okay. Uh, yes. So now the, the next you. item is uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, staff will go ahead if, if we're ready. We have the call for art RFQ. Okay, I'll keep this as simple as possible. Um the staff now has the, the, the call for art for the steps at the council chambers has closed. 
We have 11 wow. uh, submissions. Great. So all I'm asking is how has, and I'm not saying how in the past because we can change things. How does this commission feel that process needs to take place now? Do, do we bring all 11 here and let everybody look at all 11 because they're they're just they're just qualifications. Remember, you're not going to see a whole lot of art. There's samples in there, but it's not necessarily what they're proposing is going to be there. And it's their qualification. You, does the whole commission want to look at, or do you want to create an ad hoc committee? It's as simple as that. Well, we've always so historically, yeah, we've all had exposure to it. Yeah. All the visibility. Yeah. And we talk about each item and why we like it, why we just like it, why we think it'd be fitting. Yeah. I mean, my view is in the grand scheme of things, an ad hoc committee would be fine, but I think in the spirit of continuing to try to join this commission into one entity, I, I should see it. That is my so the, the park people can understand what we do. So you don't, so it's not in the dark. Well, it's park, I think it's a good learning experience. Yeah. 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 Okay. So in this case, at least for this case, we don't want to establish an ad hoc. We want the whole commission. And based, on, based on the situation, too, because there is, I mean, I guess oh, 11 yeah. is a lot, but there's only 11. That's if really there was 67 of them, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and, but because there is more work in than just saying yes, right. no, so you've got to review just, all 11. It's the so. responses. They're not, they're not sample designs or anything. It's they're just not exactly yeah. what's going up on the, okay. on the and, stairs. And, and did they tell you what medium and all that stuff? So we use, we use the form no. that we use okay. in the past okay. to put up there. So we'll get as much information for each artist, bring the package here, and, uh, and we'll review it here as an agenda. Do they all have visuals or some just description? I think there's, I think Jamie said some had samples. But, so there's Ooh. visuals for every single one, but it might not be the exact check. because okay. I wouldn't present something that doesn't have visuals necessarily. Okay, well, right? well I'll see. I don't think we've ever well, done they that. Can present. They, have, well, they have past work. Jamie okay. told me that because Jamie is the expert in our yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she told me that they have samples, but most of it is the wording of these are my qualifications. This is what I've done in the past. Good. Blah blah blah. Oh yeah, but so, well, we look at past art. We yeah, consider yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. When the agenda comes out, the agenda packet comes out before whatever meeting we look at that, will the artists be listed or will they not? Because then we could be looking at websites. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to, how we would do I don't that. Think we I don't think we've had that before. No. If I they would, didn't have samples. You'll probably see this exact before. We have the artists, but not all the details. No, there's no way I'm going to put all the details. Yeah. 11 yeah. packets. Yeah. But even if we have the artist name, if they have well, websites, sure. then we can really Is that what you want? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm just yeah, we, we always have the artist we name. We have the artist name. Yeah. In and the agenda web... packet? That's a public yeah. item. Yes. Yes. All right. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Advertising to them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. All right. We have enough information to move forward. Thank you. <laughs> are we done with that? Yes. And then I think we're done with that. We're going to move on. Um, are there any informational items, staff? Director Hernandez? No. No informational items. Oh, I noticed the future um, agenda item list is not here. Can you just? It is there. It is there. It's yeah. on the agenda. It, well, it's not on her computer. Where okay. on the agenda? Yes. Right the underneath page. informational items. Right here. Commission subcommittees, and then it has two agendas. It's not on. It's not on her. No. It's not on the the one at the at the city. Can we yeah. have a, there's a um HTML version, and then there's a PDF version. And so maybe it doesn't, it's yeah, not on the HTML version. So we go over to the HTML version. Can we add a brochure? It's fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Just go ahead. And... Okay, there it is. It's not, it's not on the HTML version. Yeah, there you go. All right. So um, anybody want to, are there any, in, there are none from staff, no informational items. So now we're moving to, we don't have any um, ad hoc. We have to remove subcommittee and change them into ad hoc committees, but we don't have yeah. one. Um, information. Does any commissioner have a, any report they'd like to make or statement of anything that they've done? We have the Easter egg. Um, we have the oh, egg. Geez, after we all have that the egg hunts coming up, Brandy. <laughs> Please. Please. The, the spring. The spring. The spring. The spring. The spring. Thank you. Hunt. Yeah, that's so. Cool. But but that's yeah, all no. that. It's not <laughs> cool. What is that? I know. I I'm sorry. I'm guessing it's around Easter. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> it's an informational item, isn't you it? You have that date? And we didn't do anything about uh, okay. What's the date? Next weekend, not yeah. this weekend. 
the 30th. The 30th, <laughs> yeah. Saturday, the 30th. It's in the springtime. Okay, okay. In so it's the spring is the spring egg hunt. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that right. that was. And uh, do you I think they can use volunteers. volunteers. You don't need volunteers from. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you would like to volunteer, they, we are looking for staff and volunteers so right now. So please contact the Parks and Recreation Department specifically. Um, ask for um, Bridget. 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 You're gonna be right here. Yeah. I'll be right there. Okay. Um. Now the future agenda items. Uh. Can I, uh, the staff, can I ask what the difference is between art tours and the brochure? Yeah, see, that's when when you said that the brochure is on the future agenda. Yeah, we need to update the okay. we need to update the works. That's okay. the and then we need to update the wording. So let me if I can okay. if I may yeah. lay the groundwork for for everybody um because this was something I was focused on um at the February twentieth meeting we had the following future agenda items requested. Redwood Grove Pathway, Museum Oak Tree Replacement, Bike and Walk Art Tours, Dog Park Plants, Art Brochure, List of Artwork and Assets and Loans. And the reason we need that information is because we can't update the art brochure without the list of artwork and assets. So you're saying the current list is erroneous? Some things, what current list? What do you look like? The current one says Redwood Grove Pathway, Art Tours. Yes, yes it sounds like something got cut off somewhere. Park and Lou. Um, art fund presentation, artwork so and brochure, assets, brochure and brochure, brochure fell off. Yeah. yeah. And also, so also, and also art, wait, 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 wait. there's one other item: the status on the update on art repairs. Yeah, so that's it's not on here either. Man, yeah. who messed that up, Casey? It was not. It was oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, y'all. <laughs> so great to see you. <laughs> So I think this is important though because we we I feel like we're not getting stuff done. So um so we're not no the art brochure. We were talking about the art brochure last October. October. I went and I checked the the minutes and I looked at the transcript. We were talking about it then about the process for how we were going to update it, and we're still talking about it, and it's now March. Um we also need we need an update on the midnight stomp series. That those are the the, the chickens <laughs> that are outside Safeway. We we need to know where the, was the purchase completed. That's oh yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. So that's Does that's that be part of the assets though, or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So artwork and assets. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Let me suggest you. Can I can I wait. put can I commit to working because I we meet in two weeks to set the next agenda. I think we should just have an item on the agenda which is catch up on everything that we're behind on in arts. I don't think that works because we talked about that at the February 20th meeting and we talked about the process for how agenda items get on the agenda and it didn't work. And so that's why I want to I want to be very specific on the record about what we need. What's the process to get agenda items on? Yeah, the two weeks before a meeting, Manny and I get together, we look at the list and we also look at whatever's coming up in operations and we create an agenda that we can think we can kill in two hours. Let me review one more time. There's three ways to get things on the agenda. That is, this commission can say that right now at the next meeting, we want X to be on the on the agenda. That's one. Second way is the commissioner and I work together to get things on the agenda. That's two in our regular meeting. The third way is staff initiates it, council initiates it, city hall initiates says this needs to be on the agenda. That's the third. Right. Yeah. From my perspective, what we have asked for in the future agenda items portion of the meeting has not made it into the actual agenda. And that's what I want to articulate here just so that Manny has it. And I can send you both a list if you want. But Please. the Midnight Stomp series, that's uh, an asset. But we need to know, was it, was it purchased? Sculptures to be installed. There are a bunch of sculptures that were approved in 2023. And I don't think we know which ones are still waiting to be installed in 2024. That list I know I gave early on, though. I don't even think we're a complete commission. Oh. I did provide that list. Provide again. Yeah, I'll provide it again. That's fine. That's not that hard. I've got okay. it in my file. I'll okay. provide that. That's fantastic. Um, and well, then the whole thing. I, I know recall. Which ones have been repaired no. and which ones are still out? Okay, so. so I don't recall that, but but then also we needed to know the status of refurbishing musical gamble and imagine that. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So I, I we don't know what the status is. Let me okay. So stop I'll series. Send an email. I'll send you. Send me an email because there's things on there I've never heard before. So oh, okay. I don't know where to find that information. Well, yes, I'll, I'll, if it's if this works for everybody, I'll send it to Manny and Casey and Janine. 
and then ask that you forward it to everybody so that everybody can see it. Okay. But we want it as an agenda item. Yes. Next month. Absolutely. I it, can I get four nods that that's yeah, an agenda. Yes, on that. Let me yes, yes. Okay, good. That's enough. Um, thank you very much. It it was done when former uh, chair Waldman. Waldman was on. He gave the update when she was still part of the. We also we also going to put the GTs on there because that's a time bound thing. Yeah, GT thing. It's already. Yeah. What is Grant Park Movement of Art? Like oh yeah, that'll be on there next week too, or next month too. Okay, um, so just to give you some. Quick record, we are doing upgrades at the Grant Park um, facilities out there on the electrical so we can add heating, ventilating, and air conditioning out there, um, as well as other amenities in those buildings. It includes uh, an actual additional service from PG&E, and the service has to go pretty much on that whole corner of uh, Grant Park. So, the the, I don't know, is that a dog? It's out in the front corner no, of the no, oh, okay, uh, that's it. There's a, some kind the of compass. The compass. No. It's the compass. It's like a turtle. turtle. It's a turtle. Okay, it's yeah. A turtle. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That turtle needs to be relocated. Okay. So, the next report that you'll see next month is any suggestions on where to put it? So, when we send that so out, you better go look on the other side of the path, I think. It's not the footprint's not that big. That's the good news. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. They should go look at Grant Park. And it's like uh, it's on it's on the corner of Holt. And, and I'll send Grant I'll Park send is... I'll send the map yeah. too. So when we come to the meeting, if you've been out there, you've okay. seen yeah. the agenda items. So you've yeah. been out there. Now you can look. We'll look at the map and see you if we can pick something. Yeah. Depends, depends yeah. on where it goes. Oh, can't okay. move the cement pad. Here, we'll, okay. If we need a cement pad, wherever we decide to put it, okay. we'll just move. I assume you told Matt Duffy that we did not pass the pictures. Oh, yes. we. He, somebody actually reached out to him ahead of time. Right. Thank you. Yes, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Casey, and I want to thank um, Director Fernandez for keeping this meeting agenda short. So even though we didn't have everything on it, it was, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Um, I joined the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>